And welcome, everyone, to Friday night here on twitch.tv slash saving throw show. And that means, say it with me, kids at home, it's time for wild, wild cards. Card. Yeah. It's time for wild no, cards. You, wild guys, cards. No, you guys are very bad at this, and that's why you're kids. Okay. Um, so, well, we're not kids at home. Well, then who am I doing this for? Fred? You know what? Do over. Welcome, everybody. It's Friday night here on Saving Throw, and that means it's time for wild cards. Don't say it with me, kids at home. And we will be Hi. continuing to follow Jebediah Nightlinger's traveling carnival of the extraordinary as it winds its way from settlement to settlement in the Weird West and all of the shadowy places in between. We will be playing in the setting world of Deadlands, the Weird West, the newest edition from Pinnacle Entertainment. And we will be using the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition rule set. My name is Jordan Caves Callerman. I am the ringmaster of this table. And thank you so very much to all of you mysterious strangers for joining us tonight. All of you out there looking all mysterious and strange as you normally do. Looking exceptionally mysterious tonight, if I do say so myself. But there are some non-mysterious people here or some people who are potentially mysterious. But let's, let's uh, you know, just... Wait, one second. Let's adjust our gain. <laughs> Let's. I don't, think uh, I don't think you're on that microphone because it didn't get louder when you got close to that mic. See, did I it? thought that might be the case. Let's demystify what's going on while I look at my audio settings. I definitely am on this microphone. Um, so, everyone, what I would like to know from you all tonight, I would like to know your name. I would like to know your character's name. And I would like to know who is, apart from each other, or uh, who is your favorite member of Nightlinger's Traveling Carnival of the Extraordinary, and why? Other than each other? Is other than each other. Okay. <clears throat> so, so like, uh, yeah, got it. I got this. Can I go Ooh, first? Oh, so yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay, cool. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Grav Gulati, and I play Victor Parrish, the fastest gunman in the West. And if you want to challenge him, come on. Come on over and challenge him. He will kill you dead. Um, so, uh, Victor, um, I, you didn't say look up to. You said, like, who is their favorite in the carnival? Favorite. Yeah, who's your favorite member of the carnival other than each other? Uh, Victor's favorite person is the Nightman, which is Nightlinger's um, uh, close personal bodyguard that not many people know about but just sort of fear because of they don't they don't know him and the sort of presence he gives out. And Victor kind of cherishes that sort of um, vibe that he's putting out. And he really wants to figure out how he himself could become something like that sort of mysterious, uh, very powerful, but very quiet and, and sheltered put away uh, sort of person that uh, nobody really bothers and he can just do whatever he wants whenever he wants. Okay, interesting. So your favorite member of the carnival uh, uh -huh. is the Nightman. That's the, right. The, the creepy thing that we saw just once so far that slid out from underneath Nightlinger's uh, carriage or his wagon when he was in danger and just picked him up and carried him back inside and that's it. Wild card, baby. All right. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Victor Parrish. Fastest draw in the West and um, fascinated with people that make people uncomfortable. Who would like to go next? Uh, I'll I go. shall go. Oh, you no, nope, you did it before me. <laughs> Going for it. Mm -hmm. Hi, I oh, okay. am Megan Caves. I'm Megan Caves, and I play Celestina Moldovanu. Um, uh, this this is hard because I can't, off the top of my head, think of every person in the carnival. So I'm going to say I think his name is Lunk. She probably likes Lunk. <laughs> uh, so you were talking about L Lunk. I believe who we have only mentioned in passing once or twice, and I think we lost JP. We, we lost JP. Oh, yeah, he no. rip. He, he, he uh, definitely dropped he screwed out. Up, uh, he screwed up all the windows. Thanks. Oh Thanks no, that, JP. Oh. Uh, he's having internet issues, so hopefully we can get those uh, fixed up before um, before too long. Um, so Lunk is the uh, I believe the animal handler, the attractive one at the carnival, who's kind of dumb yeah. as a bag of rocks and. Um, she probably though honestly like her next real favorite is not a person it's probably one of the other ravens because <laughs> she's people are hard you know all right hard. so it's either 
Lunk, the hot animal guy, <laughs> or maybe another bird. <laughs> I don't know what you were expecting out of these answers, JCC, but <laughs> all right. So uh, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll take that as an answer from Celestina, whose um, uh, sexual wires might have gotten a little crossed there. Uh, and very um, by by virtue of being the no, only person still remaining, other hand, who, other hand, Sorry. Here you who go. is not uh, answered yet. Would you like to go, Dom? Sure, I'd be happy to. Hi, my name's Dom Zook, and I play Buster Buzz Callahan, and he is the the uh, the cowboy bard and former fastest gun in the West, I guess. Uh, <laughs> mm. um, and he, uh, I think he takes a a, a liking to uh, two people, if I may. Two people? Yeah. Holy crap, I didn't leave myself enough room to write this down. Let me adjust some things. <laughs> uh, uh, Leonard and uh, Mama Lou. Um, Leonard, Leonard, he... I think Leonard and he... While um, Buster has the performance background, he grew up kind of in a salt-of-the-earth kind of family all carnival people, but he knew he'd learned the value of hard work and, and putting things together and family and stuff from the very get go. And so he, I think gets that from Leonard, just the, the, the work ethic and everything and, and, um, and kind of appreciates his point of view. Whereas Mama Lou has been one of his kind of confidants with his ailment. So, uh, uh, he trusts her and, um, yeah, he, he, he doesn't have a whole lot of trust with, with a ton of people at the carnival at, when it comes to, um, what's, what's ailing him. But, uh, but Mama Lou has the closest, uh, bead on it all. So, yeah. I don't even believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know that the rest of the crew are even all that aware of uh, Buster's ailment. They might know a little bit about it, but uh, I don't think it's something that has been widely broadcast by by Buzz. No. Is that accurate? Uh, that, that's pretty accurate. Uh, I think I mentioned a little bit that there was some, some trouble with, with shooting uh, at one point, but... Uh, Oh, is, is that Jordan? It's Mika. <laughs> <laughs> Say a thing. Yeah, he's there because I heard his chair creak. Oh, and yeah, but he's, he's not again. talking, no. He's kind no, of, he's but not. Jordan is back. He's just kind of <laughs> sling blading in his chair. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> oh, and I'm talking and my internet's still pretty unstable. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we will um, we'll do the best with you then while we can. Uh, so thank you very much to Buster for letting us know the two people that uh, are your favorites at the carnival. Um, and both for very uh, respectful, responsible reasons. Midas, or JP, your name, your character's yes. name, and who your favorite person at the carnival is apart from each other. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna finish saying that, even though from my perspective, you didn't. <laughs> um, but I think I know what the question is. So, <laughs> hi everybody, uh, my name is Jordan Pridgen. I'm playing Midas Buchanan. I have no idea how many of these words are making it through to you, the audience, and my friends playing on this game, but I'm just gonna keep on powering through. Um, Midas is a toy maker who's also a new, new scientist and all that jam, and he, uh, he really likes, his favorite person at the carnival is the chef. The chef who really likes his uh, stuff because uh, he he likes how passionate the chef gets about, I can't remember his name. Off Raphael Le Duc. We have only mentioned him in passing I'm, I'm sure, as well. Yes, and he makes like bizarrely good food for a like traveling <laughs> group uh, that ostensibly probably is pretty light on rations most of the time. And I think that Midas is consistently impressed with like the craftsmanship of this guy's food. He is a world-class chef. 
I mean, if if he was in today's restaurant industry, he would probably be Michelin starred. And yes, he is cooking uh, rations for <laughs> for a traveling carnival. Um, all right. Well, thank you very much for all of that fun. information. Well, oh no, man, this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> let's all let's all say let's all give a quick offering up to the uh, the internet lords. And and please ask them to bestow kind internet upon uh, our our dear friend Jordan Pritchen. Please, internet, internet lords. lords. Is please he praying or is he frozen? Lords. I can't tell. <laughs> is he okay, praying? okay. Or if, is if he it, frozen? If it fully drops out again, I'm just gonna like <laughs> do the full like turn it all off for ten minutes. Okay. I think every right. time you mention if it's going to drop out, you have had a. <laughs> if it's going to drop out, I, it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Just know that for tonight's game, uh, the part of Jordan Pridgen will be played by William Shatner. <laughs> uh, so thank or you Vita. guys. Thank you for answering those questions and introducing yourselves. And a big thank you to any of you mysterious strangers who are wandering in right now. Welcome. Welcome to Wild Cards. And for those of you who are new or don't know or maybe just forgot, uh, we here at Saving Throw are an independent group doing our best to put on high quality uh, role playing game content and bring it to you weekly, several times a week, if at all possible, to keep you entertained and distracted from the world outside your windows. Just do us a favor and don't go outside. It's not worth it out there. Just stay in here and hang out with us on Saving Throw. However, because of that, we do rely on the support of our viewership in order to keep going, in order to keep paying rent on a studio space that we hope to one day return to when all of this has calmed down a bit. So if you are having a great time tonight, if you're enjoying what you're doing, if you wanna support us, support the show, support the channel, please do consider tipping during the show. It means a lot to us. It helps us keep our bills paid and helps us continue to keep bringing content to you week after week. And as a fun side effect of that, all cash tips and bit cheers over 100 bits go towards unlocking reward tiers, which can have sometimes small, sometimes large, sometimes catastrophic effects on the game or the campaign as a whole. To see what those are tonight, you can enter exclamation mark unlocks in the chat pane and follow that link. If you need the tip link, you can enter exclamation mark tips in the chat link and follow that link. But if you can't tip or you don't want to, that is 100% fine as well. We are very, very glad to have you here hanging out with us in the chat, watching the show. And please do, if you are so inclined, feel free to spread the word about the show. We would love to have more mysterious strangers, throngs of mysterious strangers to intimidate us with their loathsome stares. So spread the word about the show. Use the hashtag WildcardsRPG on your social media network of choice. And we would very much appreciate it. The more the merrier, as we like to say here. And on that note, too, if you sub resub or gift a sub during tonight's show you get to hand out a curious ticket to either myself the ringmaster or to the table for the players to use as they see fit these function as limited re-rolls and uh, go a long way towards helping our group succeed and survive um we are also still 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 going to keep this sub goal because it's fun and we unlocked it last week and that means at some point tonight i will not say when i will keep you on the edge of your seat but at some point tonight we will be treated to a dom song <gasps> dom da dom 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 song i learned the um, thong song on the yay. ukulele so that's did you awesome. really oh. learn the thong song on the ukulele no i didn't true. that's gonna have to be an extra sub goal uh, uh, all right <laughs> We know what to do for next time. However, tonight's sub goal is a double draw. If we get 25 new draw, draw. strangers oh, no. to sub <laughs> to the channel tonight, we will unlock an additional draw for one of the players at the table. And depending on when it comes in, it may persist until the next session as well. So uh, join us, join us folks. There's plenty of room by the fire. And uh, while you're just gonna have to scoot over just a little bit to welcome one other person, and that is the entity uh, in person form known as Hero Forge. If you guys oh. don't know about HeroForge.com and the fine people that work over there, that is a, a website and a place where you can design and customize your very own 3D miniature for your tabletop game of choice. Uh, let's look at the little bit of detail you can see that is not uh, green screened out. Uh. Megan got her Celestina miniature not too long ago. We'll probably have to post a picture on social media. Yay. This uh, blurry keyed ah. out thing isn't doing it a lot of justice, even still, but it looks really cool. There's Buster Buzz Callahan up there. Mm -hmm. 
uh, showing off his. And uh, I got a I got a Jebediah Nightlinger in the mail, so maybe I'll have that to show off to you folks soon. Ooh. But not only can you add a, a whole lot of customizable options, you can also choose and customize the color of the miniature now as well. If you would like to have a full color mini without having to paint it, like the ones that uh, Dom and Megan ordered there, you can do all of that uh -oh. on oh. heroforge.com. And we have lost JP again. F in the chat, rip. I mean, this all makes right. sense. This is the hunting grounds. We probably lose each other just every now and then, you know? A bad true. connection down here to the real life. <laughs> That's very true. So uh, JP did say he was going to try and do a full system restart uh, if this happened again. So uh, oh. he's going to do that. And hopefully uh, that'll get everything, you know, figured out. But uh, in the meantime, we'll just keep on trucking. And, oh, look, wait, wait. Oh, that this was is, fast. This is new and different. Wait, he's back? You want to connect his phone? Yeah, phone oh. time, baby. Oh no. We can't and hear you. And he's muted, I think. Like and Mika is now minus yeah. again. Oh. He's turning off, and then hopefully it'll be better. Okay. All right. So joining us for around 10 <laughs> minutes via via satellite. Um, we've got <laughs> Jordan Bridget. Let's uh let's keep going, folks. Let us hand out some bennies for tonight's game. Uh, if you don't know, in Savage Worlds, bennies are a very cool resource that allow players to uh, do all manner of cool things. There's probably a, a sliding graphic that'll pop by eventually that'll explain all of their details, but everyone is going to begin this game with three bennies. So I'm going to hand over these three bennies and they will magically split into 12 bennies three of which will go to each of you through the camera. So here we go There's for no Celestina, Buster, Victor, and Midas. Magic Benny split! Oh! Whoa! Man, my Benny wow. went everywhere. You still yeah. need to work on the colors uh, that... transferring over, but. Well, yeah. that's because you have a grayscale monitor. That's going to do that. And uh, yeah, yeah. did everybody get theirs? Yes. Each? Yeah, they got thrown at me. OK. And oh, all right, we've lost Jordan again. <laughs> nope, he's back. Uh, and I am also going to get uh, Benny's to begin the, the night with. Uh, one for each of you. So that's one, two, three, four for me to start with None as the Vika. ringmaster tonight. Or Christopher. What? None for Vika or Christopher for you. No, they're not wild cards. No. Maybe one wild day. Cards? We'll find a way. We'll wild card find them. I don't know that we will. And also, I'm not entirely po sure that I heard all of that. But um, we have some things to get to, folks. We have some toasts and some unlocks already on the board. So everyone, raise your drink of choice. I did not have a cool wine glass, so I will be instead drinking from this obnoxiously orange bottle. I mean, R.D. Armand one right would like you. us to toast. What? I said there is one right by you, I think. Is it? On my desk? Uh, I'm not gonna use that. It has old water in it. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> R.D. Armand would like, R.D. Armand would like us to toast. Dog is the posse's co-pilot. <laughs> mm. yeah, and knock him down. Thank you very much, R.D. Armand. Sorry, dad. Dog is our co-pilot. It's not that, don't apologize Dog. to me. Apologize to R.D. Armand. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't do it. I'm not going to apologize for garbage. SF Giants 49er would like us to toast. Let the Deadlands nail biter continue. Set him up and knock him down. Cool. Thank you very much, SF Giants 49er. Just leave a little nail for the rest of you. What? <laughs> oh, everyone else can say weird stuff, but if I do it, I get questioned. Uh, uh, nobody e questioned you. I mean, ETU Sir Ket would like us to toast. Spooky season is in full swing. Wild cards is the perfect way to spend an October Friday night. <laughs> Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, ETU Sir Cat. We like to think so. We're glad mm -hmm. you feel that way as well. Neva and Omar would like us to toast. Even Pomeranians can aspire to be hellhounds. Set yep. them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Neva and Omar. I'm really scared by that image. <laughs> That's I mean, a that's image. in Barky's Brigade. That's that's what was going on. Yeah. Hashtag Ooh. goals. Yeah. Oh. Norman Snively would like us to toast. Hey, get back here with my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Set him up and knock him down. I like this guy. Thank you very much, guy? Norman Snively. <laughs> Lady Amago would like us to toast to the greatest show on earth. 
Set him up and knock him down. Oh, thank you very much, <laughs> Lady Mago. We humbly accept this award. <laughs> <laughs> We were we were one time named uh, greatest show on earth by Lady Amargo. Oh my god! I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this on our ads now. Yeah, yeah. All, of our, all of our branding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Put it on there. Um, <laughs> sure to, Toa Forty Seven would like us to toast. The hunting grounds are shallow and whole, and will collect one's soul. Set them up Ooh. and knock them down. Thank you very much, Toa. Is that a clue? Uh huh. <laughs> Is it? What do you think, kids at home? <laughs> Over the year. <laughs> no, no, you're all wrong. That's, there's no clues. Uh, you also, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Is it. My turn to talk, kids at home. Oh, boy. Yelso would like us to toast. Give the players more edges, not enough to give them the boost they need yet. Set them up mm. and knock them down. Okay. I we'll suppose we'll have to agree to disagree, but maybe, you know what, if they play their cards right, yell so, maybe I'll give them an edge tonight. Mm. Okay. Ooh. Vampire 54 would like us to toast, have a good night and game. I'm stuck in the hunting grounds of a campsite with spotty internet. Oh. I hope you escape your hellscape as easily as Gussie escapes any enclosure. <laughs> <laughs> Get them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Vampire 54. I hope you're having a good time camping and... Uh, that was a, a very solid gussy callback to our first Deadlands campaign. Evil Dice Monkey would like us to toast, that is not dead which can eternal lie, and with strange eons, even internet connections may die. <laughs> <laughs> Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Evil Dice Monkey. Uh, kind of the opposite of sending a prayer to the internet lords. You're sending them to the, the other places and uh, those guys, not so much fans of high speed internet. Cable lords. <laughs> Cable Lords. Mm-hmm. And finally, Yanto7 would like us to toast. A toast for Jordan's internet. May the gods of the, for the very ass, <laughs> unless a storm, licking the socket. Fingers crossed. <laughs> set them up and knock them down. Thank oh, you very much, good. Yanto7. Let's, seven. That's a good let's, hope, let's hope that prayer works. Mm-hmm. I sure hope everybody heard all of the words that I said just then. Definitely. We also have uh, some curious tickets to hand out to the folks here. So a reminder, as I prepare these curious tickets, we will read toasts at the beginning, after we come back from the break in the middle, and at the end, if any remain, we're trying to streamline things and keep them from interrupting the game. So don't worry, we will get to it if you put one in there. Committed Gaming and Ghost Hack 159 would each like to give a curious ticket to me, the Ringmaster. Thank you very much. However, Sojander, Hours Without Sleep, OFS Chem, Lady Amago, and Evil Dice Monkey would all like to give a curious ticket each to the players. <gasps> Yay! Thank you! It's a me, Bondo, would like to give two curious tickets to the players. <gasps> Thank you. The Jersey That's Driver would also like to give a curious ticket to the players, but Ogo Pogo Mojo, sensing somehow how much fun I have saying their name, would like to give a curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. Thank you very much for that. I also have fun saying that name. No, not as much fun as I have. Uh, Dirk Portley (laughs) would like to give two curious tickets to the players. Yes. This is right. Thank you, whoever you may be. Uh, Our ext hawk or red hawk or prescription ad hoc would like to give one (laughs) curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. So thank you very much for that. But Initiative Coffee Company would like to give a curious ticket to the players. Yes. And that is the curious ticket portion of this. But we have unlocked the first reward tier on our way to the final reward tier. And always hovering above all of the reward tiers is the ever present threat slash promise of the mystery box filled to the brim with viewer selected and suggested cards. But for now, the mysterious strangers have unlocked the first reward tier, which is called Tip Your Entertainers. We here at the carnival, we work on tips. So after the show, we pass the hat and the mysterious strangers have seen fit to throw a Benny into the hat for each of you. So that is one for Celestina, one for Midas, one for Victor, and one for Buster. And one for me, your humble ringmaster. Thank you very much. 
mysterious strangers. All right. I think that is all of the business that we have to attend to up top. So, before we go further, at this point, we would like to let you know that Wild Cards is rated R slash TVMA slash Canada Hardcore for <laughs> violence. <laughs> Canada Hardcore. <laughs> Which is, I think, a strong PG-13. For violence, uh, strong language, and horror content, which can often be disturbing and upsetting to some viewers. This can include things such as self-harm and other things of the like. We do make an effort to keep things as classy as possible here on Wild Cards. However, this is the weird West we are exploring, and these are savage worlds. And sometimes things do take a turn for the horrific. But now that you have been warned, we hope that you will not cover your eyes too, too tightly and hop up here on the wagon next to us as we continue our journey tonight. And with that, folks, I think it's time we saddle up. I'm holding my camera with one hand, so it's a little harder to saddle up than normal. No worries. Last time on Wild Cards, our intrepid crew of carnies found themselves awakening in a strange stormy graveyard with no real understanding of how they got here, just falling from the paths high, high above in the hunting grounds where the rest of the carnival had made their narrow escape. Our heroes found themselves in quite a predicament, surrounded on all sides by dark, demonic creatures that proved to be Manitou, hunting them and trying to take from them the life force and the light that they brought into this dark place. Our hero stumbled upon a fellow uh, castaway, or stowaway rather, down here in the Shadowlands by the name of Winifred Alfred, someone from the future of 1947 who expressed herself as a member of the Explorer Society who was once a part of a group sent to map out the hunting grounds who'd gotten lost down here below the roads of the hunting grounds in the Shadowlands and now was the sole survivor living in an underground clock safe from the Manitou above. She may have been all right and accepting of her lot, but our heroes wanted to escape. She told them that a young girl named Lottie might be their only way out of here, but she had been taken previously by a troll conjured up from Winifred's imagination by the dark power of the Reckoners themselves. Our heroes set out in search of this troll and found it, and how. Uh, Victor Parrish almost met his end, not once, but twice uh, in the conflict with this fearsome creature, but in the end, they were able to prevail and save the kidnapped Lottie, who turned out to be a very small, very lustrously golden Pomeranian with bright glowing eyes that began to project pictures into their minds. And that is where we will pick up tonight. All of you standing in this dark, dank, fetid smelling cave, having pulled this very kind, yapping looking Pomeranian out of the basket that she had been trapped inside of. You see her eyes begin to glow with a shining golden radiance that fills your eyes and your minds with images and feelings. Most immediately of which is a strong sense of gratitude that surges through you. Afterwards, images begin to fill your minds, looking like crude drawings, pictographic almost, showing you something in return for saving her. You see the image of four s figures looking humanoid, and you think you recognize a little bit of the flair of the scarf Winifred Alfred was wearing. You see them holding hands and closing their eyes and focusing and you see this <clears throat> underground clock that Winnie lived inside of begin to form itself into the ground. You see them forming tools and other things they might need out of the thin air of the Shadowlands. And knowledge courses through you about how you yourselves might be able 
to make use of the energies of the Shadowlands down here because the mysterious strangers in chat last week unlocked manifest your destiny. You all have gained a new ability with Lottie's guidance. You all have the ability to manifest things down here in the hunting grounds. However, as you watch, you see a sort of warning exclamation, uh, red flashes of warning light around this picture as you see one of the figures manifesting uh, what looks like just some small object in their hand and suddenly a bright light shines out from it calling Manitou over towards them in countless numbers and you see that figure being devoured under the dark pile of malevolent spirits. So, out of character real quick, here's how this will work tonight. You can choose individually to manifest items, whatever you would like, minor items, uh, like a, a trinket or a small handheld thing, uh, like, like a, a gun or a knife or uh, perhaps a small light, major items, uh, like anything more powerful or larger than those, or extreme items, uh, which would be something along the lines of like a means of conveyance or something large or very powerful. Each one of those will require a spirit roll from you all. Uh, the modifiers go more and more negative as the thing that you are trying to manifest goes up in complexity. However, the more complex it is, the higher the likelihood that it will attract the attention of nearby entities. So with that having been pressed into your brain, all of a sudden, the golden light fades and you are standing in a cave holding a very excited Pomeranian who is wagging her tail very rapidly. <laughs> what would you like to do? Oh. Uh, uh, well, okay. Um, this is not the direction I thought these would go. The... The dog, um, you all saw that, right? Like the dog looked in your eyes and, and you, you kind of like went somewhere. And yes. yes. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. It was not just me then. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, all right. Um, okay. Uh, great. So, um, it looks like we can, uh, maybe, maybe do things and, Buzz is going to kind of try and think for a second, and he's going to try to materialize an apple. Okay, all right. So, Buster, an apple, pretty minor thing. So, will you give me a spirit roll, please? Yes. Aced it. Ooh. Uh, that's an eleven. An 11, a success with a raise. You only need a four to succeed in Savage Worlds. So that is above and beyond. So Buzz, you focus and hold out your hand. What, so, what apple, what kind of apple, what, what picture of an apple were you thinking of in your mind? Granny Smith. Granny Smith. And as you do, almost immediately into his outreached hand, springs fully formed, not completely popping in out of nowhere, seeming to build itself rapidly from no material that any of you can discern. A bright green, speckled and ready to eat Granny Smith apple just builds itself into place in Buster's hand. Buster, before you react, will you roll a d6 for me? Three. And that is all that happened. Cool. Cool. <laughs> uh, no, uh, we. Okay. Well, okay. How do you do that? We need to make sure that, that that we're being careful with this. I mean, right. It seemed well, very much like like it could attract the attention of the things, but it's good to test. Right. Well, I just wanted to make sure we could do it, and also I'm hungry, so. Do you think it's good? Buzz it tastes like a Granny Smith apple, and it smells like a Granny Smith apple, and it feels like one in your mouth and in your hand. What if it's like one of those things, you know, they're from stories. You go into, like, un uh, underworld, and you don't eat the food or else you can't leave. 
Well, that must be one of them uh, R- Romanian stories. I haven't, I haven't heard of that one. Is Romanian? I, I suppose. I don't know. Wait, so you just thought you just thought of apples, and an apple showed up? Right, but like Midas said, I, I, I think we need to be careful with with the, you know what we try to manifest. I like, want a beer. I no, want a- no, uh, Victor. Beer me. <laughs> Give me a spirit roll. <laughs> it, it's going to draw those things to us, and and, and if and then if we have a beer, we 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 a six is a success. Uh, Victor, what sort of beer were you imagining in your head? Um, Victor can't read, so he doesn't really remember the names very much. Just the one with the red label that has the silver outline on it. That's the one he likes. The red label with the silver outline. So, Victor, uh, in front of you, uh, much the same way that Buzz's apple formed itself out of the nothingness, a brown glass bottle with a red label and a silver border and squiggles in silver and white that sort of look like words, but not really, that sort of decorate the bottle in a labelish manner, manifest themselves as well. It is filled with an amber liquid. And could I get a D6 roll from you, please? Three. Three. And that is all that happens. Victor has made beer. Is is good beer? It's damn good, yeah. Hmm. Now, do you feel poisoned or? I mean, I'm bleeding out of my chest pretty bad, but I don't think it's because of the beer. Oh, right. Do something about this. I am doing something about it. We are not fixed that, no. We should do a quick wound count here. Um, we have we have uh, lost uh, Midas again for a moment as he attends to uh, repairs on Christopher. He should be back momentarily. <laughs> I believe, Victor, you definitely have a wound remaining. I got and because one. you were incapacitated twice, both your vigor and your strength remain reduced by your injuries. Those will not go away until all of your wounds are healed. And Buster, I think you have a wound as well? That's correct. Okay. And I think... Y- yes, yes. I, I have corruption. You do have corruption. Did you? Oh, have yeah. Injuries? Yeah, Fatigue. I think I'm going to take a quirk and essentially take misophonia. So she doesn't like chewing and it's really irritating or certain little sounds. Okay. Um, see how that goes. Okay. So Is that actually, mouth Celestina. Yeah, mouth sounds, it's uh, or clicking sounds. Yeah. Like Picking at your nail, chewing apple. your nail sound. Yeah, like chewing an apple. Or Slurping drinking a beer. A beer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah um, just like that. <laughs> Celestina, your magical backlash down here in the darkness of the Shadowlands last time planted a rotten egg of corruption in your brain. And as Lottie's golden light fills your head with knowledge, so too does that sulfurous stinking egg crack open and its dark innards web their way out through your brain, absorbing themselves into the tissue of your very thoughts so that you now find the sound of chewing or smacking or things of that manner intensely irritating. And it's like you always have. I'm gonna go over to Buzz and just slap that apple out of his hand. Oh, hey, I was eating that. What? <laughs> Batting loudly. Ooh, that was Scottish. <laughs> oh, 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 okay, look, we, we all need to calm down. Nobody summon anything else uh, unless we have to. We know we can do it and and nobody attack each other. We have, I, I, I am, I, I do not think I could activate my boo-boo banisher again and I, if if we start fighting each other when all these things could be coming at us at any moment, it's just going to get bad. Oh, okay. I say we get out of here. Uh, Lottie, is, is this your name? I'm talking to dog. I don't know. Lottie, can you oh. a whisk us or something back to Winifred? In the clock, please. Lottie looks at you and kind of cocks her head to the side and then puts her 
face down on the ground and covers her her snout with her paws. Is that a no? You cannot. Okay, well, we got here. Uh, just like keep those bright eyes uh, not did you, shining. Did you mention, uh, you mentioned the clock in Winifred, right? Yeah. So after after she does that, uh, and 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 you say uh, that you're just gonna try and find your way back, Lottie jumps back up excitedly and starts prancing over to the exit of the cave and stands there, wagging her tail and looking back at the four of you. Oh, okay. I, I guess Lottie ready to go. You ready to go? Stop drinking that beer. It's loud. What? Damn, I'm almost done. Now, hold on. Did we just? Did I almost die for a magic dog? Well. It is uh, the hunting ground, so this could make sense, yes. Uh, I mean, as soon as we found that, that magic dog, as you say, uh, we, we did get a rush of knowledge, so uh, maybe there is something real to it. I mean, it, it certainly seems uh, pretty intelligent, after all. Uh, yes, he did uh, project images into our heads about how to manifest random items. So I say it's a little bit more than a regular dog. <laughs> right. Uh, All right. It, the dog is, sorry, it's trying to go into the cave or it's No, it's, it's like, uh, you guys are in the cave. So We're in the is, cave, so it's it going out. It is standing out. at the exit to the cave, which is the entrance from another perspective. Sure. Uh, and uh, wagging its tail and looking at all of you expectantly. Ah! Okay, right. dog, what do you want? We follow, yes? Hello? Lottie turns and trots out of the cave a little bit and then looks back over her shoulder as though to ensure you all are following. I think these uh, follow, yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah. is everyone ready? Can you walk uh, properly, Victor? Yeah. yeah, I can put one foot in front of the other just fine. You need help? I get uh, probably have some scraps of fabric you could wrap around your wounds. No, no, oh. I'm gonna do. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get the hell out of here. Right. Okay. But, okay. Uh, let's let's be 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 be, be careful. As as I said, I, for some reason I I don't feel like I could activate my boo boo banisher anymore. It it's it's uh, power source seems to have been burned out. Okay. Well, everyone, try to be quiet and well, don't wait. light anything up. Wait. Hold up. Can't you just like make make another one? Well, I, I don't, I, I mean, I, I guess I could try and do that, but I, I feel like the, the complexity of such a machine would, would surely shine, shine like a beacon in this area and, and just bring people from all different directions coming towards us, you, and that would be far more dangerous. Just, than... just say no, Toy Man, just say no when you want to say no. You don't got to go on like you do. Oh, all right, has... no, no, I don't think I could summon one. All right, um, let's, let's go. Well, could we summon, like, fresh, could you just summon healing, like summon skin over a hole in body? Or if we just summon like a doctor, Ooh. let's just like, everybody think doctor and the doctor oh. will show up. Yeah. Actually, we, yeah. actually, well, here's well, the thing. Mention, I do actually think I have one more, uh, and uh, Midas goes into his, his satchel of stuff that he has and pulls out, he has one more healing uh, unguent. Oh. Oh, that that also I haven't work. used. We could this, also. This will only work for one of you. We could also try to manifest other one. I mean, we have one right here. We think about it. You see it. Poof. That, no, that, that's not a bad idea. But uh, um, uh, who who who's feeling up for it? I already asked for a beer, so I feel. I like... can try. Victor is pretty busted up. Despite despite his bravado, you you all notice that he's wincing every time he has to move his torso in any way. He doesn't seem as quick or as hardy as he normally does Victor, right now. This this bad, you're not at best. Let let me try. So I roll wait, spirit. Wait 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 wait, 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 wait. But before we summon a new one, let, let's let's at least use the one that we already have. Oh, I mean, well, well, yes, but I thought we need more. Buzz also has bloody wound. Uh, yes, but I, I just think everyone that we should has be blood careful. <laughs> Buzz is okay. as, as as simple as this uh, simple as as simple as this looks. It is actually a tremendously complex substance, and oh, I, I I don't think that is not true, but it is something we can do if it's a matter of life or death. I try. 
Well, maybe right, it's easier. I, we already I, got I one. It so... may be a more of a matter of death than life at this point. Wait. At, at least let's have Victor use the one that we already have. Oh, yes, I, I plan for that. And then, Buzz, if you want, you can try to manifest the other portion. And you well, can drink that quietly. Well, well, won't it be easier for you to think of, uh, make a new one if you have another one? It's like, you know, instead of going to the market to get bread, you just cut a piece of bread in half. I mean, so these make easier. logic. Does that oh, make you mean sense? split it? Oh, not listen, really. Listen, listen, listen. Just drink the unguent that uh Midas has now and we will we don't need more unguent right now I, I i think it we could save it a little bit and just if we need it we can ask for it but uh there might be something else bigger that we need to go for and then you know we might be screwed or something i just don't want to use the power if we don't really need it but victor seems to need it more than anything I agree. You, you're looking in pretty bad shape, Victor. I'm fine. I'm damn fine. <laughs> oh, here, take this. And I, I give him the unguent. Okay. Uh, all right. But if this kills me, y'all, one of y'all better wish wish a new Victor or something to laugh. Oh, I don't mean, worry. It, they, it, it won't kill you. Yeah, they, they, right? they kill you. Oh, one out of every, I'd say, 36 times at most. It does. It can kill uh, what, not uh, I mean, uh, theoretically, yes, but uh, so can wounds, so uh, so can uh, being hurt. So I, I think in the end, you, you come out better uh, for having uh, utilized uh, such he's, device, such He's not um, how these medicine. two things work together. Nah, but, yeah. it's all right, Celsius. Those odds are pretty good, actually. Okay. So you uncork the vial of unguent. If you die, be upset, though. The oily, <laughs> gritty liquid down your throat. <laughs> Um, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, JP, it's a vigor roll on that I one? I believe so. Uh, and is that that is going to be modified by your wound total still, I believe. So that's going to be a vigor roll at a minus one. Okay, and my vigor is dropped, so it's that's actually true. So you're rolling a different die type right now. Pretty tough rooney I'm not entirely sure you need to succeed at the... Well, maybe you do. I think maybe. Hmm. What happens if I don't? It's just like if if you get a critical failure, it like backlashes. But I'm what not entirely sure that? you need to actually like succeed on the vigor roll to have it have any effect. Although I think on this one, it's it's a success heals one and a uh, a double success heals two, like oh. normal healing. So I do so. need to succeed at least to get a heal. Okay, I think so. Uh, oh, I aced it on a D four. Yeah. You. Uh, I used it again. So that's, uh, that's a nine. A nine is a success with a raise, so that would have healed two wounds with this unguent. But instead, Ooh. since you only have the one, it heals the one. And as this liquid just sort of pumps through your bloodstream, <sighs> you feel the, the, the wounds and the, the, the open cuts and everything closing up. In addition, you feel things shifting and moving inside of your torso in a way that is not painful, but not necessarily pleasant. Uh, having never had this happen to me, I imagine it's somewhat like what it feels like when someone pops in your dislocated shoulder, only all over your torso and back. However, after that unpleasant sensation ceases, you feel much, much better, Victor. Your wounds have been healed, and so too have your injuries. You are back up to full par. <laughs> good as new, Dad. Yeah. Good as new. I didn't kill Great. you, so this good. Arf! Lottie does a backflip. <laughs> ah, wow. All right. Oh, that was a good <laughs> trick. Hot dog is mad. This dog huh? in the show. Oh, yes. That would be good. Or even Zan dog. <laughs> Mm. Well, um, I'm going uh, to uh, reload my shotgun. Could probably do we... a backflip. You're going to reload your shotgun, Buster? As we walk, yeah. Okay. Uh, are you guys following Lottie? Yes. Yes. We'd like to live in this cave forever. Okay. <laughs> so I mean, I, it, I, I didn't want to assume that's what was happening, but it was feeling that way. <laughs> um, so wow. two sessions later, you're like, "Are you guys leaving the cave?" And we're like, "No." <laughs> I don't think so. Mm -mm. It's safe down here. 
you all look behind you and bid a fond farewell to the gross, awful cave that I will remind you had a huge pile of troll refuse in the in the back corner oh. of it. Uh, we should have um, taken that with us. Should have wished himself a toilet from the dog. No. <laughs> and as you begin to climb out of the uh, the depression that this cave is located in, Lottie's eyes begin to glow very softly gold, and where they glow it kind of just illuminates the ground in front of her. And she looks at the path and looks back at all of you, her eyes sort of shining in a disturbing way, and then looks back at the ground and lights up the ground, and then looks back at all of you. Off. Well, uh, that is certainly some dog there. And then she trots away. I think she's picked up the scent. Well, that's our meal ticket, let's go. Yeah. Following Lottie out of the area of the cave, you find yourselves back in the vast, empty, pitch black graveyard. And those things are still out there, searching, always searching, always hungry, looking for you. It is no walk in the park. However, because of Lottie's presence and the soft light being cast from her eyes, you all find that if you follow the trail that she marks with her gaze and follow her pace as she runs from gravestone to gravestone and then stops and then trots again and stops, you are able to make it all the way back to Winifred's home without incident and without running afoul of any of these creatures. <clears throat> You find the trap door for Winifred's home behind uh, a gravestone where you left it. I assume you open it up and go inside? Yeah. Yep. All right. So you all run inside. Oh my goodness, you're back! Uh, Lottie! I found Lottie. Yes, you Lottie! mentioned she dog. Oh, come here, yeah. you beautiful little baby girl. And Lottie runs over and just puts her front paws up on uh, Winifred's knees and she bends down and starts just playfully ruffling the dog's ears and cooing baby talk nonsense into its ears. Oh, who's a little goody 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 goo? Okay, you so are. Um, uh, you, you see now that uh, we are capable of quite a whole lot and uh, now we would like to go home and uh, so perhaps we can all work together to figure out how we can do that. And maybe you can get home too. Like, I don't feel like we're all stuck here anymore. Maybe. Angry. You all did, did wonderful work. I fully expected that would be the last I ever saw of any of you when you it, set off after Lottie. A few of us almost did, but you know, <laughs> yes, we didn't. Well, truly you are very strong or smart or, or just lucky i suppose but all these things yes thank you i'm not particularly lucky but uh maybe smart well, you, this true you might be luckier than you think if you made it there and back again in one piece but uh, you have lottie now she can she can show you the way or at least i assume i i i uh, she knows much more about this place than than I, than, than any of us did. Well, so I have a question about that. How this dog be in these hunting grounds and know so much about it, but not be one of those bad hunting ground things? Like if she can leave, why haven't she le left before? Well, I haven't ever really asked her fully and truly, but I always assumed that she was here for well, for us, because we were here and because we had a need and there was Lottie. Like you manifest Lottie is what you say. Oh, 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 no, no, nothing like that. No, no, Lottie taught us how that works, but well, that went, that went so wrong. Wait, wait, she taught you as well. How, how it go wrong? How, how, how did this happen? Lottie, after what happened? So, hold on. You, uh, Lottie taught you all how to manifest things, too. And let me guess, you manifested this all, which is pretty significant. 
and it brought some uh or you 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 said that that troll came from your fears your nightmares did you manifest that somehow oh i don't know I, it it all seems so so wondrous at first whatever we wanted at the at our beck and call but then we realized what it did, how it called to them. Oh. And then everything changes down here. Give it enough time, everything gets dark and twisted. I, I don't, I don't do that anymore. I, I, I don't use it, Af not after, not after Simon. I... Simon? What, what happened to Simon? She, behind her glasses, her, eyes appear distracted and you notice tears beginning to well up in her eyes. And as she takes her glasses off and, and goes to wipe away her tears and hide them from you, you all remember the image in that Lottie put in your minds of a, a solitary figure creating something and then being swarmed by those dark Manitou. Oh. It's, um, it's in the past now. It's uh, just if you do insist on making use of it, be more careful than we. Well, yes. Yeah, that's... We'll make sure we only use it for things we truly need and might as well shoot a glare at Victor. Victor at this point is actually kneeling down and kind of petting the dog who, Victor actually is very impressed that we got back in one piece and uh, is looking down at Lottie and is like, you're just kind of hungry, right? All right, let me wish you a bone or something. So he's gonna uh, wish Lottie uh, a dog treat. Okay, uh, make a spirit roll. And as you do that, as you start to focus on what's happening, you distantly hear Winifred say, no, what are you doing? Are you insane? Uh, aced on a D8, aced again. Uh, 24. Best yeah. dog treat ever. 24. 20, 23, uh, that, 23, 23. Sorry. Oh, oh, not as good. Um, <laughs> that is a success with uh, several raises. So as you are focusing on a dog bone, a nice, pleasant dog bone for Lottie, will you roll a d6 for me, please, Victor? Yeah. I got a two. A two. Nothing else happens. Oh. You cheeky. Victor, boy. what the hell is wrong with you? What the you dog's common her? sense for just a moment. She's no. just telling you about, about about what happened to one of her friends and you're frivolously using this power of sin. I am safe here. We are safe here. But if you do that here, it, it won't be safe. It, 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 it'll be ruined just like the rest of it. Just like everything. Listen, lady, if you want to tell us what happened to Simon, maybe I have a better idea what I'm going to get myself into. We saw it, Victor. Don't you remember? Oh, yes. I, I, I think I put this together. Simon was the one that did the thing and got uh, attacked. Buzz will thing. take Victor to the side and just go and just remind him, remember when Lottie did the thing and uh, we saw that person who was trying to manifest something and all the creatures came and swarmed him? That was Simon. Yeah, but what was he trying to do? So I'm talking about. Well, he was trying to manifest something. Right. And, and what then was that it? stuff came. What was it? I'm sure it wasn't dog bones. How do you know? How do you know? You weren't there. You're, you're just, you're, you're, you're throwing this power around Wait, with, the, with knowing that there's danger involved. What, my this, my this, but uh, it's okay. We, we figure things out together. I don't think Victor intends to just do crazy things for no Reason. It feels like Victor doesn't intend anything except to put all of us in danger because because he won't sit and think for, for a moment. Everyone, calm down, please. Stop shouting. Please. Now, I, I thank you very much for returning here and, and demonstrating to me that, that Lottie is all right and, and that you're all right. I can't go with you. Right. Well, to be perfectly honest, it doesn't feel safe. 
you're obviously all very capable, but I've seen what happens to people down here, and I don't know you all. I don't know what's in your minds, and I don't know what you might do out there, so I'll Lucky ask you no. this one thing. Just this one thing. If you are able to get wherever it is that you want to go, will you please send Lottie back to me as a sign? And then, maybe, it'll seem worth the risk. Okay. If this way you want to do it, then uh, yes, assuming Lottie also okay with plan. Lottie looks sadly at uh, Winifred and then back at all of you and whimpers a little, but then barks and sort of walks slowly over to uh, your feet. I guess that yes? That seems like a yes. All right. Um, well, it was nice uh, nice to meet you, and um, I'm sorry that you've had to go through so much alone. And uh, well, we're going to do everything we can to send Lottie back to you. I thank you. It, I don't feel so alone now, and despite my misgivings and my cynicism about your chances, still, the four of you have given me hope. And that's an altogether rare thing down here, so thank you for that, truly, really. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad that we could do something helpful. <laughs> All right. I think it's uh, time we try and get home. Yes, please. Uh, Lottie, you, you think you can help us get back to where we're supposed to be? If you don't mind my saying, you're, you're, you look to be in a somewhat poor shape. Um, please feel free to rest here for a, a, as long as you need before you uh, continue on. I mean, that, that, it's not a bad idea. It might be wise, yes. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, Buzz. It's I'm not, not like, feeling on top of my game. It's not like time is moving in any way that makes any sense anyway. Plus, we got all the beer and apples we want. Victor, I'm kidding. Shut up. All right. Okay. We will take some time. Everyone rest up. Get rejuvenated. Whatever you got to do. Uh, Although and... I must insist, no bringing anything into existence while you are down here with me. You do what you must outside, but this is my only refuge. Right. Okay, okay. You see, right. it makes sense. Got it. Okay. Okay. So, you guys are going to rest up for a little bit? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It is somewhat difficult to mark the passage of time here, but if you wanted to, you could uh, sleep uh, for, for a while, and uh, those of you who do have power points to regain, um, I would say we'd probably be able to regain them fully down here in the peace and the calm of a uh, lot of Winifred's wet refuge. How, How would we be able to sleep long enough to um, uh, rid us of fatigue? Well, for that, you would have to commit to a a, uh, a good long sleep and an eight hours or so sleep. I forgot some of you do still have some fatigue levels from uh, from that as well. So so yeah, if you're all wanting to, to like turn in for the for the evening or whatever passes for the evening down here uh you can definitely do that you would regain your power points and and lose any fatigue levels that you had but not a wound right uh you would not lose a wound no okay uh it's up to you folks if you want to get your fatigue back i i mean i think that might be smart yeah anyway. it makes sense we yeah it might make sense just to make a night of it okay all right, um, so you all uh, spend some time uh, just catching your breath, honestly, something you haven't had much of a chance to do so far. And while you rest, uh, 
S. Conrad 1109, Krieg Tanzer, meaning of night, and Chandra V. De G would each like to give a curious ticket to the players. That's four total. Hey, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, y'all. Uh, all right. So uh, let's just turn in for now. We'll wake up in the morning, I guess. And uh, sure. Such when as our, it is. When we get our strength back, we'll, we'll we'll try to do what we can. Well, you all rest, get get some sleep, and I'll I'll wake you when enough time has passed on the clock. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So you all um spend a a, a little bit of time getting situated, just catching your breath and and relaxing and resting for a bit, and eventually, you get some sleep. So each of you who have power points, um, your power points are going to be fully restored because it's five power points per hour that you gain back from resting. Nice. And um, any of you that still have lingering fatigue, that is taken away as well. Nice. Um, at some point, uh, either before you go to sleep or, or in the morning, um, do any of you try and get any information about where it is you might need to be going or what you might be coming up against or what what are you doing if anything else uh during this downtime i well like like i said like i will ask lottie if she thinks she can get us back to where we need to go um and see if i get any sort of reaction but other than that i will i'll try to inquire if there's a place that might have something like a power uh, point or something like that that might help us get back. Um, so what do you ask of Lottie specifically? Uh, Lottie, do you know of a place we can go uh, that will get us back to where we're meant to be? Her eyes light up like headlights again, and you feel the golden light enter your eyes and your brain. And suddenly, Buster, you see a gigantic gray gate in front of you, cut into the side of an imposing rock face, opening wide and leading down a path to a large gray mansion house. And at the front steps of that house stands a terrible, strong, and noble-looking woman dressed all in gray with hair blowing backwards in the wind who looks directly into your eyes with eyes of her own as gray as slate and then points behind her and as the door opens to the front of her house you see shining stairs leading upwards and then it ends arr, arr. <laughs> okay um all right, that was intense. Uh, gray, gray house, gray house with a gray lady out in front of it, and uh, and we go up the stairs. Is that the thing? Body does a backflip. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, that's great. This dog. Do you want to join the carnival? When? No, I got to send you back. Never mind. <laughs> Just, this, this would be a pretty good get for Nightlinger, I'm just thinking. Oh, man, it would. If you guys ever make it out of here, you cannot tell him about Lottie. Yeah, yeah. we can't show. We He's going to be we so mad like, at you. We all just quietly know that, too. We're like, no, he would just never forgive us for making it out of the uh, the uh, this place and, and not bringing this magic flipping dog. Um. Anything else that anyone wants to attend to while you're um, resting, or shall we continue? Midas is just exhausted, so he just goes to sleep. Okay. Yeah. It has been uh, a very harrowing few hours, few days, few weeks. It's hard to tell. And you all uh, desperately needed a little bit of rest. You wake up feeling not necessarily more hopeful or uh, completely bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, but at least a bit more capable and uh, a bit m stronger. And that's about all you can hope for down here. Well, we're ready to go. Uh, Lottie know where we're going, yes? 
Oh, well, I, I, I guess it's as good a, good a time as any to go out. Hmm. Now that it's morning or, or whatever. It's not. It's still dark as pitch <laughs> out there. It always is. But I wish you all the very best of luck. Truly. Thanks. Thank you for your help. And for your hospitality. Of course. <clears throat> Perhaps we'll meet again someday. You're always welcome at Carnival. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. If we make it out, we'll, 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 we'll send Lottie back to you, but we'll also see if there's anything we can do to find you from the outside. Well, thank you, that's, that's very kind. Well, don't let me keep you here just gabbing all day. You've things to do, places to go. You still can come with us if you change your mind. I know. Okay, just think. All right, Buzz, you were chatting with the Ma'am. little doggy there. Where are we going? We're going to a gray house. Lottie knows the way. Okay. And uh, as he says that, Lottie does uh, jump up and, and trot over towards the exit to uh, Winifred's hatch and bark excitedly, looking back over her shoulder as though seeing if you're following. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're here, Lottie. Shh. There's bad things up there. Just careful. Ah. Uh, he'll undo and you leave? the yeah, thing and go up. You head back up into the perpetual darkness and the nightmarish storm in the graveyard above you. But once again, as before, Lottie's eyes begin to glow with a soft golden light and illuminate the path in front of you. And staying behind her and taking your cues from her, though the going is slow, you are eventually able to make it across the graveyard staying away from the sight of any of the Manitou and finally find yourselves rounding a corner onto a rocky mountain path. In a different place entirely, the sky above you is gray and cloudless, just that uniform gray of an overcast day. And the wind rushes around you all up here. Suddenly you are up Hi, although the, the surroundings uh, below you are obscured by more of this gray fog. Uh, do you know what this place is? I mean, is there a whole like geographical map of, of the hunting grounds? Uh, give me an occult roll, Celestina. Okay. Let's see if you can answer your own question. Maybe I'll throw my dice all over the I, room. I feel like she can. <laughs> Very well, Buster. Uh, that is an 11. So Celestina asks the question, and then just as soon as she's done asking it, she answers it for the rest of you. Um, the hunting grounds uh, is not something that can really easily be mapped, at least not as far as you're aware, Celestina. You got a success with a raise. So you've managed to pick up on quite a, a, a number of little tidbits of trivia about the hunting grounds from just sticking close to Nightlinger and trying to uh, overhear snatches of conversation. Um, the place is different every time, and the place is different depending on who you are. Not only that, uh, there are places within the hunting grounds. It is rumored that hell exists in the hunting grounds and so too does uh, what is conventionally thought of as heaven, although no one knows uh, how to find heaven and really has ever seen it. Um, the hunting grounds is also capable of producing little bubbles, little pockets with their own worlds and universes in them that are separate from the whole yet still attached to it. It's a very malleable, tempestuous place. So, Lottie, you, you, hunting grounds is not just all bad things. It's not like hunting grounds is just hell. It's all other non-normal realities. Yes? Will okay. the other three of you, if you don't have a cult, you can make a common knowledge roll at a minus two. Okay. Uh, 
I got a two. A two I, is a failure. I uh, also got a two. A two is a failure. I got oh. an eight. An eight is a success with a raise. Was that common knowledge or occult, Victor? It was a, it was a cult. A cult. All right. So, Victor, um, that is a success with a raise. Buster and uh, Midas, y- you... This is a, a bit beyond your ken, not really your area of expertise. But Victor, you feel like from from your youth, you remember uh, some people, some higher ups in the organization talking about a, a place that they didn't use the term hunting ground, but it seemed very much like this. Um, and it was a, a good place, a place that you wanted to go. Uh, you get the impression that there are all sorts of places, both good and bad, and some in between that exist in the hunting grounds. I feel like this might be the shittiest part of this here neighborhood, if you know what I mean. Of course. We would come to a hunting ground, get lost, and end up in the worst place. Right. This is just, just yeah. our luck. Well, <sighs> yes. Lucky. Lottie just just uh, it has has trotted up around the bend of this mountain trail uh, that is climbing higher up into the mountains uh, and looks back as though asking if you're going to follow. What? Yes, we following you so fast. Well, some of us are old. <laughs> Lottie does it back. Not me, that's old. <laughs> um, I think Midas is the oldest. Of all <laughs> Thank of you. Of us. Can I so. ask? He's Christopher. How Vika and Christopher are um, reacting to Lottie's presence, if at all? Uh, okay, so I was going to say this, but then there wasn't time. Uh, Midas has quietly told Christopher to watch Lottie and try and get the backflip thing down, um, <laughs> because he was impressed by it, and he was like, oh, "That's something Christopher should be able to do." Um. Uh, yes. Okay, so Christopher um, just just stood there impassively while you gave him the instructions, and then turned and swiveled uh, on his on his legs and and walked over not too far away from your side, but always trying to keep Lottie in in view uh, as Lottie kind of moves back and forth across the path. So too does Christopher just sort of walk from side to side in front of you, keeping her in sight. Um, and he has adopted a ready stance, even as he moves. He's bent his <laughs> knees and he has his arms at his side. So he's kind of moving around like a, a strange little crab boy, um, watching watching Lottie and preparing to copy her movements should she backflip again. I think Vika is, I, I Vika being a familiar, I think has probably seen animals that are different, but Lottie definitely pushes a boundary. But I think Vika's just like, okay, I, you say we follow dog, we follow dog. I'm gonna say Vika stays on your shoulder. And even though, yes, everything you're saying is true, Vika seems a little uncomfortable with Lottie and uh, just wants to stay up uh, here away from Lottie and close to you. As you all uh, continue up this mountain pass, uh, you climb up and up, hiking this trail. It's it's not too, too hard to do. You don't need to make any rolls to do it, but still it is ever upward and it is a little bit tiring. And just as you're thinking it might be time to call for a rest as you just wind your way up through this mountainous area, you turn a corner and in front of you, you all see a huge stone gate made out of some sort of rocky gray mineral or, 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 or stone, it's hard to tell from here, that completely blocks the path in front of you. Is he supposed to be here, Lottie? Ah! Okay, you know how to get through then. She looks up at Buster. All right, Buzz, what's, uh, what's the plan? Did, did, did she give you some sort of uh, a special uh, instruction for ha- how to deal with uh, a, a giant rock in our path? Uh, n- no. What? Sorry, Lottie. How? Um, you sorry. You want you want me to do what now? She looks at you, and then she looks around at all of you, and then she looks over at the gate. Oh, oh! Can I go over to the gate and just 
push oh. it. <laughs> so, Celestina, you walk over to the gate, and as you reach out your hand to push it, suddenly out of the stone, something comes bulging and shaping with a grinding, uh, chiseling sound. The stone reshapes itself in front of your eyes into a large face, a very square and solid, impassive face just emerges from the stone and says, the gate is closed. Well, open it. Uh, no. Why? Please. The great court marshals for war. Against war, be true. Who great court? Who asks? Oh, Cel Celestina Moldovano, of course. The face kind of like does, as far as you can tell, a, a small move that looks like the arching of an eyebrow as it turns its huge grainy structure towards you, Celestina. We have no knowledge of this person. Oh, I don't know if I offended or refreshed, but uh, we just want to uh, move through area. We don't want to cause problem. We just want to- The gray off. gate is closed to all. Well, um, uh, gray gate, uh, we have uh, knowledge. We could help in the war effort uh, with, if, if the, the, um, the if, if you are marshalling for war, we, uh, we have, I have a, a little cannon. Who speaks? Uh, Midas Buchanan uh, is is my name. Uh, the face kind of shifts its position up the gate a little bit so that it can look down on you from over the head of Celestina and Buzz, who are closer to it. And it stares at you with sightless eyes. We have no knowledge of such a person. Oh. Well, uh, and now, and now you do. I mean, you, you don't have knowledge of something until it becomes knowledge that has been given to you, and I... I'm here to give you that knowledge, and we have more. We have more that we could give you, which could 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 could, 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 could be very useful in in your war effort. Yes. The gate is closed to oh. all. I, mean, okay. I wouldn't let you in for that. Uh, so, we're, we're with the dog. We're with Lottie. You have record of Lottie in there somewhere? Lottie barks and and just sort of trots around in a circle, and the face just looks down in her direction, and then looks back up impassively. The great gate is closed to all. Oh, what does it take to open the gate then? Like, is there a ticket? I can what, try my what? key. Oh, oh, yes, you don't want to the, uh, hear that happen. So you gonna do spit at me? So hold on, when, when, when Lottie showed me this, there was a gray woman with, with gray eyes who seemed to see me and then pointed back at the gate, which opened, which showed the stairs behind there. Uh, sorry, is there a, a gray lady here uh, that we could speak with? Uh, Can we speak to your manager? Gate? The lady of the gray marshals her forces and prepares for war with the emptiness. Right, oh, right. Well, we're mean? also... We're kind of anti-emptiness ourselves, so yeah, um, we we're things, and and things um are the antithesis of emptiness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the face looks down at you, Midas, and just says, "Foolish." Okay. <laughs> Shit. Uh, um, Buzz, maybe you play a song for Gate. Maybe Gate like music. I mean, the last time I tried to play a song for something, it it hit really hard. Oh. Oh. Well, okay, but that does not mean that everything you play music for from here on out will hit very hard. Right. No, but uh, honestly, Buzz, I think you just misread the intent of that troll like pretty severely right off the bat. I, I think a lot of the time your music is is, is very soothing and does a great. Uh, I I certainly uh, feel calmer when you okay, play thanks. it. Okay, thanks, thanks, Midas, thanks. I appreciate like it. it. Thank you. Too. <laughs> uh, uh, would you like to hear a song, Greg Eight? The face Maybe. just stares out into the middle distance <laughs> impassively. Right. Um, well, could you tell? I mean, um, it's not a no. Could, no, it's not. Could you tell the gray lady that uh, uh, 
Buster Callahan is here to see her. The Grey Gate will remain closed to all. The Lady of the Grey marshals her forces and prepares for war. Okay. No interruptions are to be sent until such time as the mighty armies of the Grey pour forth to clean the scourge of the emptiness from this world. Okay. All right. Hot trigger fingers getting itchy here. What if we slide you, through You're just going to shoot a rock, Victor? Yeah, I'm going to shoot a rock if you don't shut up. I could I could shoot a rock as well. Uh, Celestina, Victor, the three of us together, we might be able to do some pretty serious damage to this rock. Uh, Lottie, is there another Vetro? Do you have answer here? Are we missing something? Wait, what, what was that lady's name? What would you say that were that lady? Celestina, lady. say your... No, 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 no. The one in the hole. Win Winifred. Winifred yeah, yeah, yeah. Alfred. Celestina, say say you say you're that lady. Oh, I am Winifred. What was last name? Alfred. Alfred. The from face. 1947. Looks over at you, Celest. Oh, thank you. Uh, just in case it thought you were a different Winifred Alfred, it'll Not know 46. you're the one from 1947. Um, it uh, swivels weird. its face down towards you, and um, just stares at you for a moment. We know no such person. Okay, what? What about Vika? You a raven? <laughs> you a very good raven. The only birds? Vika? Um, I'm just gonna save you guys some time. Yeah. <laughs> every every name or person that you offer up to this thing, uh, it it knows no such person. What about Jebediah Nightlinker? You know this name. What about Thomas Let's keep doing Edison? This. Let's keep doing it until we can break <laughs> JCC. He made light bulbs or something. <laughs> We know no such people. Do you know Jordan <laughs> Caves Callerman? He's a... Oh. Oh. Uh, um, okay. The world explodes. Wow. <laughs> we did it. Now you're done. done. We, we just make up names for like 30 minutes. Yeah. All right. So you guys waste a fair amount of time, <laughs> but the gate knows no such person. Uh, what if we are here to consult with Grey Lady for war efforts? Impossible! All interlopers could be agents of the emptiness. So oh, right. the Great Gate remains closed to all. Look, I, I, I think that this this conversation is is uh, uh, truly uh, getting a little repetitive. So, do we want to try just blasting this gate open? Yes. It does it work that way? Well, once I agree with Miles, come on. Oh, was was there right. anything that I? I'm missing from what Lottie showed me here. Um, when you saw the vision, you saw this giant gate and it just opened as you moved up the path. I mean, I will try to move forward and try to move past it. It does not do that like <laughs> yeah. it did in the vision. Uh, gotcha. The, the, the gotcha. gate is very, very solidly shut. It's just a, it's a stone gate, right? It's all, everything is stone. It is a gigantic gate that appears to be made out of some stone-like material, yes. How tall is this gate? Um, let's say uh, 150 feet tall. It's very big. It's a did large gate. I'm not very tall. good at size estimation, yeah, but tall. that did seems tall. That's yeah. half a football I... field. It's pretty tall. There we actually, go. It's that tall. Did I actually touch the gate before? Um, did it stop me? I don't it? believe so. No, you were just about to touch the gate, and then the face appeared. Can I try and touch the gate? Yeah, you you touch the gate. Uh, okay. No problem. It, it doesn't I was even. Wondering... Well, Register I was wondering if, if it had maybe been an illusion that we were had not tried to push through this whole time. Ah, God. Well, well it we, we hadn't tried to see to if the door was locked. I mean, I did, but he stopped me. He, he started talking before I, I really right. did any of that, though. So. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just want to say, um, uh, all of you who want to attack this thing, he said he was marshalling for war, so... The I, I just, I don't want to antagonize something that may have an army behind it. All right, well, yes. All right. I know that, that we've been uh, worried about using the manifestation ability, but if you had a particular image of something that, that, that opened our way through the door, this, this woman, then maybe manifesting that is what we need to get through this door. Well. I've never tried it this way, but if we don't want to use manifestation, I could try illusion. I don't, 
I don't know if I could do it through description like this. I could try. Uh, I feel like something might get lost in the translation. Probably. Uh, I mean, we could try. Who? Can you manifest whole person? I have a There's feeling only one that way to find out. Bolson, yeah. Huh. Hey, well, Lottie. So what's the plan? Lottie, you think manifesting the gray lady is a good idea? Uh, Lottie looks looks up at you, uh, and her eyes begin to glow golden. And inside all of your heads, a giant red X. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that Lottie, right. Okay, don't do that. Lottie, you, you tell us what we do here. You're the one who has all the knowledge about hunting grounds. Uh, what, what do? Uh, Lottie's eyes continue to glow, and the image of the red X fading from your minds is replaced by an ear uh, and a face uh, with its ear turned towards you going... Okay. All right. Okay. Um, that's well, real that, cryptic, Lottie. <laughs> that seems like she might have heard that we we're trying to blow the door down and, and maybe thought that, that it was a good idea. That's what you got from that. All right, let's do it. I, I, I'm in. I mean, at, at this point, it just seems like it, it might at least be worth a try, right? Okay, I thought, hold on. I thought hold the on. dog was telling us to listen to the door. I think that's what, the, that's, <laughs> that, that's what I. Oh, see. Lottie does a backflip. These also uh, what I think. Okay. But I like to blow up the door idea. No, no. <laughs> Victor, in this one instance, we can't blow things up yet. Let me listen. I'll tell you what I hear. Maybe hear interesting explosion on the other side for you to see. Uh, I I will go listen at the gate no, door. I, I mean, okay. I think. You go put your ear up to the door, <laughs> Celestina. Will you yes. give me a notice roll? Yes. Yes, I will. Oh, excuse me, Vito, you're on my thing. Uh, I got a four. A four, which is a success. So you press your ear against the door, and as you do, you feel something bulging out of the stone against your ear, and a giant mouth whispers, you are too close. <laughs> okay, I'm right here. You don't have to yell. You're in my personal bubble. Lottie. All right. This not work. This Hold not on. work. Hold on. I think, I think the door just needs to hear something. Oh, well, no, why didn't you say I, this? I don't think that, okay. Lottie well, looks what back do you up think, at you, Victor? Victor, and just turns her head to the side it, and looks at just everyone me? else. Is it just me and you? I don't, okay. I think what Lottie is trying to say is we got to listen real close to what the door is saying because something in there is rattling oh. something that should be rattling something else. If you know what I mean. Okay, so, door. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Make it talk. Okay, Dor, uh, we would like to go through gate. <laughs> the gray gate is closed to all. Oh, great. Is there another colored gate we can go through? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. All no. right. This plan seems to be working wonderfully. It was worth a try. <laughs> but can, uh, hey, Kate, can you tell us about the uh, emptiness that you're marshalling forces for? The emptiness are a distant threat that live across the starlit sea. They tricked the Lady of the Grey into an alliance. And when we went to exchange the sacred artifacts, an ambush laid waste to us and our artifact was stolen. So oh. now we marshal for war and the Grey Gate remains closed to all. Okay, okay. what was this artifact? Mm -hmm. The Chalice of the Grey. What does it, what does it look like? Yeah, what does it look like? Yeah, describe it real, real nice, real Is slow. Is it gray? Uh, the the wall <laughs> sort of looks down at Lottie and Lottie looks up at all of you <laughs> and her eyes begin to glow. And in your head, you see kind of like a gray chalice cuppy looking thing uh, with a question mark next to it. All right. Okay, cool. We just need to well, make uh, one of those. What Maybe. happened? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Uh, 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 wall. If if we were able to uh, get you this this gray chalice, you may call me in. Gate. Okay. <laughs> it's only Gate around gate. here. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> gate. If we were to find this this gray chalice for you, would you be able to let us in? 
If the sacred artifact was returned and the threat of the emptiness was dealt with, then the gray gate would be open. Okay, a question then. Where do we go to get jealous? You say he's over some sort of sea? The emptiness lie across the vast starlit sea. And as it says that, you all hear a rushing of wind and looking off down, uh, down below to the side where the landscape was covered by gray cloud, suddenly wind just brushes it away and you see a huge body of water glittering with darkness and bright pinpoints of light underneath the water. The sky above remains gray and solid, but the water itself ripples and shines like the night sky across the starlit sea. Oh, I would have got time for that. Come on, Lottie, let's make a great cup. <laughs> <clears throat> Do you oh. think we'd be able to manifest something that 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 that's specific and, and unique? Uh, you, uh, I mean, I'm willing to give it a try if it'll save us time over, you know, a, a, an endless sea. Lottie, you think we can do this? <laughs> Lottie looks up at all of you and sort of like looks down at the ground studiously for a very long time and then <laughs> looks back up at all of you and her eyes shine golden and in your head you see uh, what looks like a, a sort of Victor type person just standing there and going like this. And then you see the Victor figure put its fingers against its head and think very hard. And another Victor figure pops up right next to it, going like this. And as the first Victor looks at it, the other one just sort of like melts and dissolves into a weird uh, puddle as the first Victor uh, just staggers backwards, its hands clutching its head. And then a giant red X goes, <laughs> Right. Okay, I'm getting a getting a theme here. We maybe don't manifest powerful magical items that uh, are sacred and uh, required, and could one start wars. More thought. A gate. We are no fun. Can we go through? <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Um, actually, okay. JCC, I, I would like to use, I have a clue token here. I would like to use, uh, you do not. I, found, I found this clue token on the floor. You do not have a clue token. We didn't use it. Okay. It's just... That you wish you did though. <laughs> oh, well. No, I'm having a blast. This is my favorite part of All right. the entire um, campaign. <laughs> so without, oh, great. Uh, without your clue token, um, <laughs> you have just the information at hand. What would okay. you all like to do? All right. My phone died. Think... Sorry. I think no we're worries, going, you're back. Yeah. I think we are going to need to travel across this starlit sky. Get this thing back. Sea! Sea. Star, starlit sea. And uh, get this thing back and uh, present it to Gate here. My good friend Gate. And, uh, you know, end the threat of the emptiness. The Great Gate has no friends. You what? do now, buddy. What you have bought, or uh, whatever we need to traverse this thing, this sea? Lottie looks at you, Celestina, and then looks back at Victor, <laughs> and and cocks her head to the side. What? Why you keep looking at Victor? Victor, you must have a answer. So, what is your answer? Look, my answers have been either shoot the thing or make something to make that thing shut up. So it's one of those two. Uh, okay. Lottie looks away from you, Victor, and looks over towards uh, Buster and cocks her head. <laughs> Can we just wish like a dog translator or some shit? Because I'm tired of this shit. I can uh, talk to Vic Vika. You can you talk to Lottie? Lottie can uh, we just go across the sea now and shit, get this chalice, this gray chalice? Great, let's do it. Okay, I'll I'll have... start walking Wait, down the. Can I can I get a quick, what what the vision that had melting Victor? Yes, uh, basically the what the... did we figure something out from that? Uh, it it seemed to be as Buster put it, uh, not a great idea to manifest powerful magical objects that can, uh, that are sacred and can start wars. 
Okay. It seemed like that wouldn't go well. <laughs> I think that's I think that sounds fair. Ah, uh, so what we do, Buster? We walk all the way back. We have to go back to the graveyard. Is? Uh, no. We just go down the, the the steps there, back where the clouds were. I think the the sea is right there. I don't think we have to and go all the way back. As Buster says that and points over there, another bit of wind sort of rushes by and blows some fog away, revealing some stone steps cut into the side of the See? of the rocky cliff face leading down towards the shore below. Okay. Oh, welcome. Oh, great, yes. Thank you. So Thank you, Gate. Appreciate it, Did you it, manifest buddy. those stairs, though? Is that you, Buster? Hmm? Did you manifest those stairs? I sure hope not. Real quick question. What if we manifest ladder and climb over it? <laughs> That's a big ass ladder. All right. So it's worth trying. Okay. Let's go to sea, I guess. Yeah. And I'll start walking down. <laughs> okay. All Let's right. Let's go to sea. <laughs> Let's go to sea. Um, so you all start walking down uh, the, the, slick steps of stone that have been carved into the side of this cliff face. And even though they are a little bit slippery, um, once again, following where Lottie goes, uh, you have sure footing all the way down until you find yourselves standing on a, a, a sandy beach. Uh, the sand almost seems completely drained of color. It's not white sand, it's just the absence of color and you see the dark glittering water of the Starlit Sea spreading out endlessly before you. Okay, so we're here. Okay. How are we get across? Do we have to manifest the boat? I would say that's probably, <laughs> yep. Lottie does a backflip. <laughs> okay. You think are you watching Christopher? <laughs> is oh. something we One can second. do together? So oh. Sorry, Celestina, because is this something? is important. Um, can you give me a performance roll for Christopher, please, Midas? God, he's just gonna... Yes. Belly flop. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> Lost your hat. Taste it. Okay, he got a five. A five? Mm -hmm. A five, which is a success. So Lottie does a backflip, and you suddenly hear uh, the whirring and grinding of gears, and you see Christopher just leap straight up into the air, almost coming up to the level of your shoulder, Midas. And then in the air, he tucks himself into a ball and just rolls backwards and lands on his feet, sort of clumsily, but then stands to his feet and turns back to you. I'm Christopher. What was the yes. scariest <laughs> thing I've seen yes. yet? All right, Christopher. Fantastic, Christopher. And now I, that's uh, real nice, but why don't you make me a beer? I, I, I pull a Christopher uh, snout of my, and I, I, I throw snout? a Christopher snack at Christopher. <laughs> snout. He, he snaps the Christopher snack out of the air with alarming speed and uh, gnaws on it. Arr, 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 arr. His oh. eyes just sort of like going wildly back and forth as he does. They, that is very upsetting and I don't like it. Christopher, you must be quieter with those snakes. Snakes? <laughs> Sorry, yes. Uh, Chris, snakes. Do, uh, do be quiet now, um, but... But good job, good job, Christopher. All right, sorry, Celestina, you were saying. I was saying before all of this, do we need to manifest together both? Like, we work together to manifest bigger object, or can one person do it? Only one of you can manifest something at a time. However, um, the rest of you can support, uh, if you'd like. Uh, all right, I well, to let's... Uh... Which one of us has been on a boat before? Let's go with that. I've been on boat. All right, then you picture that boat you were on, and we'll all help oh. you picture it. I tried to make a little bit nicer boats than that boat. Uh, okay, think boat. Uh, spirit. Okay. Right? So, well, don't don't make your roll yet, Celestina. Uh, okay. This is. Can you tell me the boat you were picturing in your mind? Um, it was like a um a shipping boat that went from probably Northern Europe somewhere 
to America. So you want to manifest like a like a trans uh, a transatlantic uh, liner? I mean, in from the time period, I'm thinking like pirate boat ship, like wooden. It's not like a nice one. It's just like a a boat that somebody owns. That's uh, well, shipping. Think think closer to Titanic than uh, than uh, a, a wooden pirate boat at this at this time period. Okay, then yeah, the Titanic boat. <laughs> okay, I, but the right, boat she came yes, Can we talk? I, the boat nope. she came across nope. in the no. Celestina has been on a boat before. That was the question that was asked, and she is imagining the boat that she crossed the ocean we on. We called this a sea. I didn't think we needed a canoe. You're right. All right. <laughs> Go with so, style. Celestina, this is going to be uh, an extreme manifestation. Uh, this is going to be a spirit roll at a minus four. Um, but anyone who wants to... Um, who wants to support? Definitely can. Nah. Yes. Wait, what? Oh. Buster, come on. <laughs> <laughs> can, can Midas uh, use science to, like, describe the workings of a, a like, boat engine? Um, <laughs> sure. Sure, yeah. You could try and aid Celestina's um, mental picture of it by describing the schematics. That makes sense. Um, I will... I will try to support by just having Celestina regale me with the story of her coming to America and describing this boat in as great detail as possible. So she remembers it. She has something to kind of bring those memories back out. I'm going to ask her pointed questions about how big it was, things like that, okay. just to help oh. <laughs> her remember what's coming back. And just go like it. It was that big. Oh, it was quite big. And it's pretty okay. big. So it's pretty I'll big. Mm -hmm. Celestina, we'll make a persuasion roll to support herself. Uh, no, that'll be a persuade. <laughs> that'll be a persuade like on that. your part. Okay. Oh my god. Uh, Victor, are you supporting? I'm just gonna use a spirit roll if that's okay. Just a good old-fashioned spirit roll. I mean, crewman. No. No. Okay. Then that's I a passive will... thing. That, yeah. Hmm. Then. I will. Were, did the boat the boat have any guns on it, Celestine? I could describe oh, those guns really on well. Boats? Uh, it might have. I, I imagine uh, the crew <laughs> had the crew. You tell me about the guns, guns, and then I'll describe it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's what it. <laughs> did we all eat for dinner? Oh my goodness! Is... I had pizza. I had this tacos. Is, um, so boat pizza. schematic. Um. Asking pointed questions about the boat to help keep it fresh in her head. Mm -hmm. Boat defenses. I'm saying boats gotta have defenses, you know, so cannons and shit. Boat defenses. Okay, so that's a science roll from Midas. That's a persuasion roll from uh, Buster and Victor. What kind of roll? Um, what do you think? What, Shooting? You, yeah, you shoot guns. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to let you make a shooting roll as a support here to represent your knowledge of firearms uh, in this <laughs> one instance. Cool. Cool? I accept. Can I get a curious ticket? You can. No, I get a curious ticket. A curious ticket to re-roll for Midas. So let's see if any of these gentlemen are able to support Celestina's efforts to manifest an ocean liner. I got an 11. An 11 is hey, a success so with a race. Minus doesn't know very much about it. I've got a 16. Holy shit. All right. Um, I know boat cool. guns, baby. Midas? Guess what Midas doesn't know very much about? Boats, it seems boom, boom. like. <laughs> did you crit fail? Sure did. Uh, oh, no. All right. Um, so. Oh. I described uh, boats wrong. You, between Buster and Victor, asking you questions, trying to put you mentally back in that place on that boat, Celestina, the picture of it begins to form itself more clearly in your mind. However, while they're doing that, Midas keeps interjecting with technical schematic information for the way that a boat's engine works, uh, how it might pump the, wa the bilge water in and out. Uh, and every time he does that, it distracts you from what it was that you were trying to uh, remember. So, uh, that's a plus two from Victor, 
a plus the two general from... volumetric uh, target that you're trying to hit here on. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe that's a minus one from uh, yeah. from Midas. It might be a minus two, actually. No, I think it's only I, minus no, one. No, I think it's I think it's a minus two because it's a double magnet. Yeah. I mean, crit... Oh right, crit what value you, subtracts what two. Conquer? Um, so he essentially is talking over Victor and, and Buster in such a way, just interjecting uh, in a way that distracts you and keeps moving your mind away from the mental picture. Also, because you have trouble magnet, yes, Celestina, go ahead. I was gonna say, I like to imagine that Christopher is also a part of this and he's going, I'm Christopher, I'm Christopher, I'm yeah. Christopher. <laughs> Christopher is also periodically shouting things and Vika, Picking up on your frustration and your lack of focus, Celestina, flaps off of your shoulder and just flies over towards Midas and lands on top of his head and starts trying to peck at his forehead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sending him oh, just yeah. no control. running off a little ways down the beach, trying to get Vika <laughs> off of his head without hurting Vika because he's afraid of what might happen if that happened. Um, so, Vika. Ah, uh, sorry, Vika. Uh. <laughs> The distraction momentarily taken care of. You are making this roll at a net total of spirit mm. minus two. Nah. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> one of those dice was a one and that scared me. Um, can I have a curious ticket? You can. Yeah. I'll allow it. I got a, f but nope. Yeah. Curious. I'm gonna use a Benny. A penny to re-roll for Celestina. Well, that didn't do it. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh. That's a four. <laughs> a four is a success. So as you stand there, the distant sound of Vika squawking and Midas squawking in return, and uh, Victor and Buster somewhat distracted by the spectacle happening on the beach, but still trying to ask you questions and keep your mind in place. Celestina, you feel yourself mentally transported back to the ship that brought you across the ocean to America. And as it locks in place in your head, you all hear the giant popping sound as so much air is displaced in front of you with a gigantic ocean liner <clears throat> that just stump, like just drops slightly out of the air and splashes mightily Ooh. into the water around you. But before you have time to react, Celestina, will you please roll a d6 for me? Yeah. I aced it. It's a six. You rolled a six? Yeah. Oh, no. Are you fucking kidding me? No, is that bad? <laughs> I don't know. Not, no, it's not bad. That's the one thing you could roll on that die after doing this that would not attract anything over to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This die always treats me well. Thank you, Lone Star Savage. Hey. So, <laughs> hey, free giant boat. Yes. Yeah. Uh, nice. Boat. And we have no one who knows how to run it. Boat, this boat, is great. With a, with a <laughs> of its oh. gigantic horn, well, the boat crew. Just... I manifest crew too, oh. obviously. Right. No, you didn't. With, with a four. <laughs> Worth a shot. <laughs> yeah. However, uh, as the boat appears in front of you, it does appear as though there is smoke uh, leaving the smokestacks, uh, it, it is operational. The boat is running. Its machinery is going. And it waits for you, silent and imposing and massive <laughs> on the beach. I, I wow. think we might have to climb upside. <laughs> Unless there's somebody who can drop down the... Or, or was I, was I uh, clever enough to be able to make sure there's a way for us to get on the boat? I mean, I'm going to guess that boats like this would have some external ladders that would allow people who are just sure. wanting to do some boat inspection to be able to climb up and down the sides of it uh, more easily. So yeah, <laughs> even though it's not meant for uh, you know commercial boarding and it's not the easiest ladder to climb, there is a giant rusty tall uh, section of rungs sticking out of the side of the boat within view. 
Oh, this boat brings me back in a way I don't want to go back to. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, but well, well done, uh, oh, manifesting oh, hell of a this. Job. Yeah. Please. Yes. Uh, please. Ah! After you. Great job. Very well done. Midas comes yeah, back Vika. and he has little like bits of red peck <laughs> bleeding on his oh, forehead. Oh, Vika, I appreciate the help. Ah. No offense, Midas. <laughs> Oh, don't, 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 don't worry. It, 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 it barely hurts at all. Oh, good. Well, man talk. Oh, it's totally fine. <laughs> yes, Vika, yes. This is a classic man. <laughs> yes, she does. He does a little snap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So are you going to board the giant uh, abandoned ocean liner <laughs> in front of you? Yes. yes. Wait, wait, do planes exist? Can we do a plane now? Too late. You already brought in a giant uh, boat. If you think I'm going to let you also do a plane, <laughs> no, that's no, no, no. just ridiculous. Floating castle. Oh, Ornithopters exist. Better. I mean, any of that could have been possible, but instead, <laughs> you guys went giant transatlantic ocean liner. <laughs> the choice has been made. Listen, you said C. <laughs> As we went. As you all climb up the sides of it, um, being careful not to slip since it's a long ways down to the, the ocean below. Um, is someone bringing Lottie up as well? Yeah. 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 Okay. Christopher. <laughs> um, no, no. <laughs> yes. I bet Christopher loves Lottie. He could like, have a little dog to pet. It would be so cute. Do not. I think it'd be a real Lenny, a George and Lenny situation there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, as you climb up onto the abandoned boat and prepare to set sail across the starlit sea, here seems like as good a time as any for us to take a very quick break and come back to see if this boat is operational, how it will get you across the starlit sea, and what threats or adventures lie in wait across this body of water. To find out, you'll have to join us momentarily after we take a brief bio break. We're Don't go anywhere. Sketch. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for sticking with us while we took a brief moment to take care of some physical needs. Um, also, just so you all are aware, or if you're just joining in, uh, unfortunately, Jordan Pridgen playing Midas Buchanan is experiencing some internet issues tonight. So if he seems a little choppy or a little disconnected <laughs> from what we're saying, uh, just know that it's that. It's, it's that. Um, the more he's, dances he does, the more clear it is that he's, he's not existing just... on the same time as us. He's holding poses so that the gift makers among you can can grab something really easily. That's exactly what he's doing. Yeah. He's always <laughs> so thoughtful. Before we jump back in, uh, let's just check here. It looks like we do have a toast to get to. So everyone, raise your beverage of choice. Jack of Diamonds V10 would like us to toast. Puppy dog of mystery, give me the sight. Show me the secrets of the universe tonight. Set him up. <laughs> And knock them down. Thank you very much, Jack of Diamonds. <laughs> we are definitely that is how it works. asking a whole lot of Lonnie tonight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, maybe you guys just haven't asked the right rhyming question. Also, uh, Guess I'm Salad and Malkara Darkwell would each like to give a curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. Thank you very much for that. But 54 Ooh. Aqua Snakes and Griffin of Falcon Hollow would each like to give you all a curious ticket as well. So that's Two, one from each of them, just to be clear. All of the Aqua Snakes do not each individually give a curious oh. ticket. So just two okay. total, but still, thank you very much for that, folks. Yeah. And uh, we still have uh, reward tiers that remain to be unlocked, some fun ones as well. So take a look at that, folks, if you are so inclined. But let us jump back in here. Celestina, with the aid of her companions, had managed to manifest a very large ship uh, to carry you all across the Starlit Sea with no consequence. Lucky, lucky, lucky. So you all climb up the side of it, and as soon as you step out onto the deck, you hear the horn of the boat sound. And it begins to move across the water as though it was just waiting for you all to fully get on board before it began its journey. Huh. You're muted. Celestina. Uh, see, I manifest crew as well. They're just invisible. <laughs> huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Way better yeah. than before. Than real boat. <laughs> mm. 
All right. Well, uh, hmm. uh, uh, magic ship. Uh, we want to go find the Great Chalice, I guess. So go there. The boat was already moving, and your <laughs> words are just sort of ripped away by the wind uh, as, as they go. If the boat heard them, it makes no indication and does not alter its course. Maybe cool. you have to sing it, Buzz. <laughs> no, it's already moving. I, I you know, Don't it's going to take us. But, 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 Buster, I, I, I appreciate you uh, giving... <laughs> giving the proper guidance to the boat, even if there's no indication that it can hear us or is reacting to that in any way. Right. I still appreciate it. I'm yeah. Christopher. <laughs> Thanks, Christopher. Right. All right. Um, so y you all uh, just are on the, the top deck of this boat as it just begins to cut the waters of the Starlit Sea and move you all out into the gray. And... After a little while, the gray light of the sky fades as the shoreline and the mountain fade behind you and give way to that sort of empty blackness that you saw back in the Shadowlands at the graveyard. However, the ambient starlight from the water beneath you is enough to sort of light the night with a very dim illumination, uh, almost like being out on a very bright, Moonlit night. Is is there a, a an actual breeze, or are we? Is there nothing? Uh, there is an actual breeze, and and you do smell uh, salt water on the air. Uh, it feels very much like like being on a boat on the ocean, except for the alien strangeness of it when you look out all around you. And it is all around you. You see nothing as far as you can see in any direction, at least in, in this light. Uh, Lottie, do you have <laughs> any idea how long this is going to take to get to wherever these were going? <laughs> well, I hope it isn't as long as it took me to get to America the first time. How long that take? Like three months. But three months? Oh, it made stops. I mean, for you have to deliver. stop to go to the bathroom several times uh, <laughs> on uh, on that long of a Just boat voyage. Pulls over to Iceland for a little <laughs> while. And... All right, but this time, make sure you go if you need to go. <laughs> um, on this episode of Wild Cards, we learn what it took for immigrants to, <laughs> to come to America and just it's how a long really it took. last from the past. Welcome was, as we learn learning. about history. The Titanic. Take history. All immigrants. Okay. Hmm. All right. So you all are sailing out into the darkness. And after a little while, feeling a bit alone and adrift out at sea, not knowing how far away from the shore you are and how far you have yet to go, Buster, you look around the faces of your companions and you see that they look a, a little bit lost inside themselves. And you think to yourself, maybe a little musical taste of home might be enough to to rally their spirits and 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 bring them back to the present mm. moment maybe maybe a little bit of focus on what it is you're all doing this for might help so so i ask you buster buzz callahan do you have a song that comes to mind that might be good for this situation um you know i think i do I think oh, I boy. did. A Dom song was unlocked, so let's all listen as Buster Callahan, the singing cowboy, shows us this new trick he learned. <clears throat> Why don't you all uh, just kind of gather around and, and uh, you know, we, we've been here for a little while, so uh, sometimes you can just sort of forget about where we come from, but uh, maybe this is just something that we all kind of kind of need in our lives. You want me to sing along? I'm sure it'll go super well instead of being oddly patchy. No. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, uh, you certainly can sing along. I guarantee you'll know it. 
Oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam, where the deer and the antelope play, where seldom is heard a discouraging word, and the skies are all cloud are not cloudy all day. <laughs> Home, home on the range Where the deer and the antelope play Where seldom is heard a discouraging word And the skies are not cloudy all day <laughs> I hope uh, there's many more verses to that, but looks well like we may done, be. Buster uh. Buzz Callahan. Well done. And as your guitar music floats out into the night, as if in answer on the horizon. You sound like the storm like that song. <laughs> comes a strike of lightning and a rumble of thunder. And without warning, all of a sudden, a storm rushes through the darkened sky above you. Boiling, roiling clouds come running overhead until torrential rain begins sheeting down all around you and the ocean becomes tumultuous and hugely wavy. Someone hear something? No, just me? Okay. There, there were voices what? in that. <laughs> All I can hear is the storm that's overtaking. I think there might be voices in this track, but it's not important. What oh, yeah, there important. are definitely voices in this track, yes. Uh, the, the Phantom Crew, all, almost as if trying to sell the illusion of this ocean liner. You hear the shouts of, uh, of other people from the darkness, but never see hide nor hair of them. And as the boat begins to swell up on the waves and crash down, and you all are forced to grab on to a handrail just to stay on board. Will all of you give me a notice roll, please? No penalty to this. I have a curious ticket. A curious ticket for Celestina. I got a five. A I... five. It's also a got a five. A five for Buster Buzz Callahan. A three for me. That's I a got failure, Victor. An eleven. Victor. An eleven. All right. So, um, Victor, you are just pitched towards the side of the rails, and you grab on and hold on for dear life to avoid being tossed over the side of this boat. Midas and Buzz, you look out to the darkness where the storm came from, and you see a huge swell of a wave, a giant storm swell building up in the water out in the distance. And Celestina, you see that too, but you also see something beneath the surface of the water, something cutting off the starlight from within the starlit sea, a large, gigantic, shadowy shape under the water, riding that storm swell directly towards your boat. We are in a dramatic task. Oh. Oh. Okay. He's you must creation. stay aboard the boat. You must guide the boat stay safely out of the storm. And you must stay alive. Uh. You have four rounds to accumulate a total of 21 successes. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. Let's do it. Yes. Celestina, a four of spades. Midas, a three of spades. Victor, a three of diamonds. No, oh, no, sorry. Wait, I'm sorry. I missed mine. Uh, it is a three of spades, Midas. Three of spades. Okay. Okay. Victor, a ten of diamonds. Buster, an eight of clubs. Now, I oh. will remind you, clubs are a complication in a dramatic task. So if you act on your club, you take a minus two to any action. 
And if you fail, the consequences will be dire. You could choose not to act, but you sacrifice your momentum and your ability to gain successes towards your goal. First I would up, like to, I would like a new card. You would like to spend a Benny to redraw your card. Buster, not an eight of clubs, a joker. Oh, yeah. So you drew a joker, Buster. You don't spend that Benny. You get it right back. In fact, each nice. of you get an additional Benny and Buster. Yes, Instead of yes. a minus two, you get a plus two to your action taken this turn. Awesome. So, Buster, you can go at any point. Otherwise, it is going to be Victor who is up first. Go ahead. Okay. Victor, um... you are caught in a squall, and you are just fighting to stay on board. Okay. Oh, what do you want to do? Actually, is there a way that I can support? I can only support one person, right? Or is there? Yeah, there's. A, I yes. can only support one person. You can only support time. one person. Okay, for now. Um, okay, yeah, <laughs> go ahead, Victor. Okay. Um, um, I wish I had taken boating. Um, <clears throat> but who knew? We all um, wish we had taken boating. Every yeah. Um, I'm going to try yeah. and. Who? I don't really have many skills that are good for this. I guess I'll try to use athletics to get maybe to the center of the boat, somewhere where I can hold on to like a big mast or something, just get away from the rails. Okay, so you're trying to get away from the edges and away from the water that is crashing up over the sides of the liner in towards the middle where you'll be safe and away from the sides. That makes sense. Give me an athletics roll, Victor. Okay. <coughs> uh, I gotta use the Benny. A Benny to re-roll. That's better. Uh, that is a nine. Nine. That is a success with the raise. That is two successes. Victor, as the boat pitches to one side, the side that you are clutching the handrails on, and you see the water come rushing up towards you as it looks like the boat might even capsize, you push yourself back from the edge of the handrail, and with your momentum that sends you flying backwards, you roll backwards and get up to a run and run towards the center of the boat, grabbing onto something more sturdy in the middle of it and doing it deftly. That is two successes. Whew. Good start. Next up, again, you can go at any time, Buster, but next up it will be Celestina. Okay, I would like to use elemental manipulation to just try and help hold off any like water that's coming too strongly onto the boat. I mean, I know I can't do a whole, whole lot. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, just, that is, um, you to, might be able to do a little for right. sure. That's, um, that's, so rather than have you spend the power points and try and make this roll, I'm <clears> just going to have you give me a spell casting roll since we are in a dramatic task. Well, you know what? Spend the power points. Uh, if you are casting a spell, so go go ahead and use the power points and give me a spell casting roll. Okay. I used it. Okay, that's an eight. An eight. All right, that is a success with a raise. So that is two more successes. Celestina, you summon up dark energy, which just flows so easily into you down here and you push outwards against the water that is crashing up over the sides of the boat of the of the guardrails threatening to wash your companions away and anytime the water seems to get close to them you just redirect it and push it as much as you can to shape it out and away from them well done Midas Midas. So I was thinking, so Midas wants to try. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. <laughs> uh, Midas wants to uh, basically go around and like try and, and watch the areas that are being strained on the ship and try and take out his tools and just like reinforce and like help to stop pieces from uh, like breaking from the ship. So I wanted to try and use repair. Okay. All right, sounds good. Um, so give me a repair roll, Midas. What, sorry? Go ahead and make that roll. Okay. Good times. <laughs> crit fail. Oh no! <laughs> a crit fail. Uh, that is going to remove a success from your total. Midas. Oh boy. 
And you have Trouble Magnet, right? Oh. <laughs> yes. So, so you tell me if this is too extreme for Trouble Magnet. Midas, you pull out your tools from your tool belt, and with a hammer in one hand and a wrench in the other, you just run out towards the gr creaking and groaning structures in the middle of the boat that are that look like they could come down at any moment. And as you head towards there, trying to reinforce things as much as you can, the boat pitches to one side and you go sprawling forward and your tools shoot off over Ooh. the side of the boat Ooh. and into the water below. Now, is that too extreme for a trouble magnet miner? <laughs> I, I think it seems pretty fair. Okay, then Midas, you spill forward and out of your apron tumble oh. your various screwdrivers and wrenches. And as you watch in horror in front of you, they roll off the edge of the ship and down into the dark depths below. That is one away from your successes this round. Buster, take us home. Um, I want to, um, is there a rope around here that I can maybe uh, tie to something uh, attached to the deck? and then try to get at least one other person tied to it. Um, Celestina, did you imagine a boat that had rope on the deck? Yeah, probably. I think yes, all boats- Yes, there are... is. There is a rope okay, nearby. Great, great. Um, a, a, a giant thick coil of rope uh, just lies on the, on the deck and you want to try and use it to do what? I want to try to tie it to the boat, uh, unless it's already attached to the boat. Uh, and then try to tie it around somebody else to make sure that they stay on the boat, like my okay. or Celestina. All right, so you find um, you find a very sturdy-looking uh, metal loop on the deck of the boat and run the rope through it. Will you give me... Uh, I'm going to say that's probably a uh, either athletics or survival for using the rope in that way. I would way. say survival for knots and stuff. Sure, yeah, that makes sense to me. So okay. go ahead and give me a survival roll. Remember, it's at a plus two because of your joker. Aced it. Uh, that's a uh, nine. A nine is a success with a raise. That is two more successes. So you run it through that loop and you start tying it around. Uh, I mean, put your own oxygen mask on first, right? You tie it around your own waist is the goal to try and like get everyone um, secured yeah. in this manner. Yes. All right, put on your mask first. You run the rope around yourself and tighten it with a knot that'll still allow you to move, um, but will keep you secure should anything go horribly awry, which it seems like things definitely could. At the end of the first round, you have five successes. All right, we're Second averaging. Second round, new deck. Celestina, a queen of clubs. Ooh. No, no, no. Midas, a five of clubs. Oh my God. Oh, right. Victor, a jack of clubs. Whoa, club city. Buster, a nine of diamonds. <laughs> mm. I will take a new card. A new card for Celestina. Me too. Yeah, let's Celestina, let's you have a up. jack of hearts. A new card for Victor. Victor, an ace of spades. Yes. A new card for Midas. Midas, a king of diamonds. Not a club to it. be seen. Uh, first up, Hooray. Victor. No club club. Victor, okay. you're going to be up first. Now, as... This is happening. The storm continues to violently thrash all around you all. And that storm swell wave is getting closer, Victor. Now you can see it in the distance, rising up above the surface of the ocean and rolling slowly and menacingly directly towards your boat. Okay. Um, so because this is all like sort of fluid and happening uh, simultaneously. Can I use um, my shooting skill to say that like what, something that's attached to a rope, maybe like a, a lifeboat or something is about to careen into one of my 
party members and I shoot the rope so it misses them. Absolutely. That sounds cool. dope and very dramatic. Um, cool. Let's do it. In fact, I will give you a plus one for the, the cinematic excellence of, uh, of that moment. So as you see that wave coming forward, again, the boat but hits if you back. But if you crit fail, that lifeboat hits me. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, the boat pitches back and one of the lifeboat riggings comes unsnapped and the boat comes swinging down across the deck, heading directly towards your crewmates. So you okay. pull your gun and line up a shot. Give me shooting and Let's... okay, hold on. Okay. So. Oh, unstable platform. Yeah. Unstable platform called shot. Okay, sure, yeah. Rain and bad light. What? Um, Those are new. The, the, the rain and darkness? I mean, rain is new, but I'm I mean, bad light here. Um, yeah. uh, no, let's go cinematic. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, just give me, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll knock off your plus one. So just a straight shooting roll. This is fair. Uh, whew, that was really close. Uh, I will use a Benny. A Benny for Victor to re-roll. Um, it's just a five. That's a success. Uh, I know, okay. Yeah, I don't wanna shoot anybody. I'll go with the five. I don't wanna shoot anybody. A five, one success. As the boat comes swinging down towards your companions, uh, Midas is on his his uh, belly, losing, scrabbling after his tools, but Celestina and Buster look behind themselves just in time to see this lifeboat swinging right towards them, and a shot rings out, severing the one cable connecting it and sending it instead, flying and tumbling off the side of the boat and out into the darkness, but oh. not with your companions in tow. Nice yes, shot, Victor. Victor. Yes, you got it. Next up is going to be Midas. Midas. <laughs> you said me, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Great. Okay. Oh, pandemics. I'm Midas. So. Midas. I am going to try. I'm I, okay. I want to try and activate Christopher and have him, him run and like assist everybody else in the group. Okay. Okay. Or um, at least have him have, <laughs> have him like grab it. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll be like, Christopher, go, 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 grab at the rigging, pull, pull on this, the, these things. Just like tell him to do stuff. So I want to try and use weird science. Okay, all right. Uh, give me a weird science roll and activate Christopher's helpful mode. <laughs> Boat mode, activate. <laughs> go, go helpful mode. Uh, is, is there a minus on this? Not on your weird science roll, no. Okay, so it is a four. Four. Could be four. A four. Okay, or a it 40. is a okay. four. It is a four, <laughs> is which a is a success. <laughs> so don't forget to spend your power points for that. But as you see your tools rolling yep, off, done. you turn to your side and see Christopher just standing there looking at you quizzically, and you activate him. And Christopher immediately just stands up straight and turns into helpful mode, turning around and striding across the deck, seemingly uncaring of the of the tossing of the boat beneath him and trying to pull down ropes, shove people out of the way when things are coming towards them and things of that nature. Christopher is being very helpful and that is another success. Next up is going to be Celestina. Uh, I mean, I think that uh, I'm. I, I think I'm essentially going to uh, try and do the same thing. I think that's probably my best bet here. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to continue in just various different ways to try to help manage the water that is coming aboard the ship, or if it looks like it's about to hit somebody, to try and at least move it sideways. Okay, um, so I will either let you spend a power point to cast this action anew. Mm -hmm. um, or no, this sounds like maintaining it. Um, so you would need to spend one power point to keep it maintained, mm -hmm. but you're going to make this roll at a minus one, essentially, mm -hmm. because you are trying to focus on keeping the power uh, active. But okay. you're not casting a new power. Uh, this is hard to adjudicate. Um, Can I... 
can I use Rika in dramatic tasks? Like you can do whatever you want in a dramatic task, as long as it makes sense and you've got a skill to roll. Well, can okay, can Rika help uh, support by essentially going, there's a wave over here, like going, ka! So you want Vika to spot? Yes. Okay, um, so why don't you give me a notice roll, the better of the two between yours and Vika's, since this is going to be your action this turn. Okay, hers is better, but she doesn't have a wild die. She doesn't have what? A wild die. Yes, yeah, she does. Vika does? She- Vika rolls with the wild die. She just doesn't have her own Benny. I don't think I real. I think you said that at one point, and then it went out of my brain. As you're familiar, she does. She gets extra wounds and the wild die, just no bennies. So no minus one. No, no, no minus okay, one. Okay, that's a six. But I, I, I will try again with a curious ticket. You're gonna spend a curious ticket to roll for higher and hope you don't critically fail. Oh, I don't put it in the ether. I'm gonna go with a six. I got a one and a two and it scared me. <laughs> Ooh, all right. So a six is one success. Um, seeing everything going to hell around you, Celestina, and seeing that wave getting closer and knowing that you do, that there is something huge beneath that wave, you send Vika up, but not too far up, not so far she'll be tossed around by the wind, just far enough that she can help you all keep an eye out for things. If that one is coming, who knows what else may be coming from another direction. So you send Vika up and tell her to call out to you if anything else is coming down. That is one success. We finish with Buster. Um, uh... I'm going to continue to try to get people uh, um, connected to this rope, uh, if I can. Okay. Um, and so I'm thinking that this might be athletics to stay steady on the deck. That sounds good to me. Trying to force yourself across the heaving deck of a boat to tie uh, a secure knot around one of your friends. Yeah. Give me athletics. Ooh. Uh, that was close. Um, can I have a curious ticket, please? A curious ticket, you may indeed. Curious. There's a four. Or actually, no, it's not. It's a three because of my wound. Um, actually, stop right there. Stop oh. right there. Stop with the three. Because the mysterious strangers in chat have unlocked a draw. <gasps> draw! Ooh. Draw, draw, And draw. that could potentially draw. be very draw. helpful right oh. now. Yeah. So. Megan, say draw. Draw. Buster, Buzz Callahan, once hey. again, the die hey. have chosen you. So, tell me when to stop riffling through the deck. Are you ready? Okay. Yes. Riffle, 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 riffle. Now. Riffle, riffle. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> like that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Deadly Stop blow. It. Play to double the damage total of a successful melee attack. Punch the wave. Okay. Punch the, yeah. punch the monster. All right, thank you very much, Mysterious Strangers. Maybe that'll come in handy right now, maybe later, but Buster, you had rolled a three, I yeah. believe. Yes, so I'm going to use a Benny to... A Benny to re-roll for Buster. Uh, okay, there it is. That's a four. I rolled four. a five, minus one is a four. Which is a success. So, Buster, um, you go stumbling across the deck, trying to keep your footing, thankful for the rope that you've already secured around yourself as you stagger towards... Um, I'm going to say... Who's closest to me? I think Celestina was closest to me. Celestina was initially closest to you. Yeah, Yeah, that's probably still true. I'll I'll say Celestina then. You grab the rope and you just wrap it around Celestina's waist and tie it off in place, leaving you plenty of rope to tie the rest, but securing her to the deck as well. All right. Thanks, Bob. All right, just just, just hang on, hang on. Of round two, that was four successes you gained. Uh Oh, okay. So we're round three. What's We're up? Nine How many rounds do we have? Three oh, or four? Four. You're halfway oh. through. Okay, cool. Round three. Celestina, a four of clubs. Ooh, damn. Woof. Midas, a joker. <laughs> but is it a joker of clubs? Yeah. It is not. It's not oh. a joker of clubs. It's a joker of awesomeness. You each get an additional Benny. Yeah. And Midas, you get a plus two on your action this turn. Victor. A five of diamonds, 
Not for Victor. No, no, no. A nine of clubs instead. Oh, come <laughs> on. Oh, boy. And for Scared. Buster, yeah. an eight of clubs. Oh, oh, man. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah. I would like a new card. Here's yeah, a, me too. I so, want a new So, new card for everyone with a club. Wise choice. All right. Benny spent Celestina, not a four of clubs, a ten of diamonds. <laughs> yes. Victor, not a nine of clubs, a king of spades. Yes. Buster, not an eight of clubs, a three of hearts. Uh, okay. Well avoided, everybody. Okay. Uh, so, Midas, you can go at any time. Otherwise, we start with Victor. <clears throat> okay, I'll let Victor go. Let Victor go. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. <laughs> um, uh, I have a question, though. Can I use uh, attributes, or is it only skills? Because um, I have something so that... I want to, I, I don't know. Well, so what I want to do is like, Victor is not used to being on boats. I, I don't think he's ever been on a boat and all this moving has made him very sick. So I think he, he calls out to Lottie and gets close and says, Lottie, can you make me something that makes me less sick? So he's just asking for some sort of medicine to help him get through this. Um. So Lottie can't give it to you, but in this one specific instance, because you can manifest down here, right, right. I'll let you make a manifestation roll using spirit. Cool. However, what are you trying to manifest? I mean, Dramamine, which doesn't exist yet probably, but like something that will settle my stomach so I can continue to be alive. I don't know offhand something like that, but I assume there's probably a mundane um, solution, like a like a, a, a folk medicine solution for this. So sure. it won't sort be of a magical role. Some sort so, of weed you chew on or something. Uh, what? I have tactile desensitizers, which I don't think we would waste on this, but you could maybe manifest to have the same effect. But they're, I wouldn't know about that. For wounds, but it would make sense that they could also do something as minor as... Sorry. No, sorry, I, 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 Victor probably wouldn't know what how even to pronounce one of those. So I feel like he would just, whatever simple medicine he could think of, uh, maybe he like, when he learned how to ride horses, he, he found some medicine that helped him with that kind of unstable platform or trains maybe, I don't know. Um, but anyways, uh, so spirit roll? Yeah, this will carry with it the normal consequences though. So you could make this a pretty interesting dramatic task. So go for it, buddy. Give yes. me a spirit roll, Victor. This is what I want. Interesting. Not interesting oh, enough for you, eh? That, that almost became very interesting. Uh, I'm gonna use a Benny. A Benny to re-roll, leaving one remaining, Victor. Yes. We are on the same boat. This one's cocked. Oh, that one aced. We are all on the same boat. That's true. Mm -hmm. uh, so that like is, uh, that's an 11. An 11. An 11 that's is a success with a raise just shy of two raises. So Victor, you fall to the ground just grasping on to something desperately as the wind and rain just tear at you. And you see Lottie the dog just sort of standing, just moving with the boat nearby and just looking at you. And you call out to her for something, anything to help settle your insides. And you reach out and as you do, a nice steaming mug of hot water with lemon and honey <laughs> manifests itself in your hand, Victor. Um, but <laughs> despite the seeming incongruity of this, something about this one small bit of comfort, familiar comfort from home has the effect of not just steadying your stomach, but steadying your resolve a bit. You can get through this and you will, even if it's by sheer force of will, Victor. Two successes, your turn is done. Uh, do you want to roll a d6? Oh yes, please, roll a d6. I got a five. A five. And that is all you get. A nice mug of hot water with lemon and honey. Slam it, baby. Yum, yum. Oh uh, again, Midas, you can go whenever. Otherwise, next up will be Celestina. OK. OK. Uh, I will, um, essentially, I feel like I'm continuing to do the same thing. So I'll go back to the spell casting this time. OK. Uh, so will that be at a minus one? Um, at this point, let's just call it a new casting. Okay. Uh, 
That's a seven. Uh, I'll try a curious ticket. A curious ticket to re-roll. A seven. Okay, seven was what seemed best. Uh, a seven is just one shy of a raise. I'll try one, Benny. Hey, yeah. I will also let you know, down here in the Shadowlands, um, you get a free reroll on your spellcasting rolls because of your arcane right. background as a witch. Fear level is uh, not low here. Not low. I will use... Oh, I aced it. Nice. That is a 10. A 10 is a success with a raise. That is much better. So Celestina, newly bolstered by the rope that Buzz has tied around you and feeling more secure, you double your, you redouble your efforts, drawing arcane power into you from the air around you and pushing it outwards to keep the water away, almost forming a sort of bubble of of not not quite a force field but just an area of influence where the water doesn't seem quite as powerful around you and your companions two successes well done midas at any point otherwise buster okay i came up with an idea so i'll go all right i'm good to go okay so midas just wants to, now that he's like lost his weapons and he, or his tools, and he's just like scrambling around on the dock, he's just going to like try and, and find somewhere that he can like hold on to and not be thrown off of the ship. I think that's, that's his best action right now. Okay. All right, so uh, that sounds like an athletics role to me, Midas. Athletics. Yes, okay. You could find Buster and tie yourself. I a D4 oh. one while I'm at a, mon at a plus so I can. Yeah, good thinking. You do have that plus two from the Joker. Okay, so I got a five. A five? <laughs> a five is a success. Do you want to keep it? Can I get actually one curious? Let me get a curious ticket just to like try and do A curious ticket better. to re-roll. Is that Joker, baby? I like it. Uh, okay, so that's that's an eight. An eight is a success with a raise. So, Midas, you go scrambling towards the center of the boat, trying to reach out for something more secure to wrap yourself around and stay safe. However, as you do, a wave of water that Celestina redirects rushes down the front of the deck and towards you, and you go spinning off carried by this flume of water towards the edge of the boat. And as you see yourself going through the guardrails and out into the bottom, you feel something solidly grab you by the neck of your apron and pull you back onto the boat. And you look up from, up from a prone position up into Christopher's unblinking eyes as he stares down at you. I'm Christopher. And he starts just marching his way through the darkness and the water of the boat, lugging you towards something solid that you can hold on to, Midas, and you do wrap your arms around it as Christopher looks at you and then turns to go and continue helping everyone else. <laughs> Two successes, Buster, you are up. Um, okay. Uh, I am going to... Um, is, uh, is anyone else close to me or are, are they far away? I, I think you're still near Celestina. Uh, so Victor Celestina. and Midas are a bit further away from you, but this is a bit kind of loosey goosey. So you can get places if you need to. Yeah. Um, I will, uh, I'm, I'm going to like try to toss the rope, I think to, to the to uh, Victor or Midas, whoever's closest, I suppose, and and just say, grab on, tie your tie this around your waist. Uh, probably Victor's going to be closest since Midas was uh, the one who's been most tossed about by all of this. So um, you toss the the rope backwards towards Victor, and Victor, you see the heavy rope sailing through the air towards you. Give me an athletics roll, Buster. Yeah, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm changing what? my mind. Okay. Uh, because I oh, want to do something Victor. a little bit different. Um, right. I'm going. I saw. I see that Victor is feeling a little seasick, and I'm just 
going to give him a little pep talk and just be like, listen, listen, man, listen, you've been on horses. You've been, you've been in the wagons before when we've gone over lots of territory. Like you, you can do this. Don't, don't you, don't you get sick. How did you get that tea? Is that tea? I made um, it. All right. Give me a persuasion roll. Okay. Uh, that's a four. I'm going to use a Benny to re-roll that. A Benny to re-roll. Oh, and I'm glad I did. Ooh. I rolled a critical fail. <gasps> but, Seventh Son. I was just thinking. Seventh Son. Ooh. So, that knack edge allows you to spend a Benny to negate <laughs> the result of a Benny that was yes. spent in your character's presence. Yes. This does count, so you negate your own crit fail by spending a Benny with your knack edge. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, nice. uh, all right, now I'll use a curious ticket. Okay, and also <laughs> remember, he can do that to any of you who crit fail as long as you used a Benny to re-roll it and you're around Buster. Wow. Oh, nice, I aced it on an eight. Yes, baby. That's way uh, better than crit failing. That's, <laughs> and with my wound, that's an eight. <laughs> an eight? An eight is a success with a raise. That was a pretty good round for you guys. So, Buster, <laughs> you run over towards Victor with the rope. And you see him wild-eyed and holding on to the mast with one arm while he sort of sips at what looks like a mug of hot tea with the other and shouting over the storm and the rain. You get right down in his face and remind him who he is and what he's done. He's gotten through that. He'll get through this too. Two successes. You all scored a total of eight successes this round and oh, then yeah. as lightning crashes you all look at the swelling wave heading towards the boat it is almost here and with the sky splitting illumination of the lightning you all clearly see a gigantic bulbous shape floating in the in the darkness of this wave and you hear a low <laughs> that seems to come out from the ocean and shake the very bones in your body. You feel the metal on the boat shaking against itself as though it's trying to shake itself apart. Whatever is coming for you is almost here. Final round. Celestina, a 10 of diamonds. Okay, okay. Midas, a 10 of clubs. Mm. That's bad. Victor. <laughs> A four of spades, not for you, quickie boy. A six of diamonds. Yes. Buster, a 10 of hearts. Only one club so far. Midas, do you want to spend a Benny to redraw? I'm going to use a Benny. Okay. Quickie boy. A Benny for Midas, not a 10 of clubs, an eight of hearts. Yes. Nice. Okay, I'll take it. So first up is going to be Buster and then Celestina. Um, is this thing close enough for me to take a shot at? So, it is. It is close enough for you to take a shot at it. However, shooting through the water and just looking at the sheer size of this thing, not... I'll tell you for free, you do not get much of a, much of an, a, uh, inkling that that's going to do anything to this thing at all. Sure. This, okay. This thing dwarfs the boat. Okay. I shoot it. No, I'm just kidding. Um. What do you mean? Shoot the boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, shoot the boat. Ha! <laughs> Hold the old speed thing. Shoot the hostage. Um, kill us if we're dead. <laughs> uh, I will... Um, hmm. You can also go on hold if you want to wait for someone else to go first. Y yeah, I will go on... I will go on hold. All right, so skipping over Buster for right now, we will jump to Celestina. Control this water. I want to keep All right. controlling this water. So Celestina, seeing everything that's coming, still stands on the deck of the ship, moving her arms and screaming against the storm, trying to keep the water shaped and away from the rest of you. Uh, give me a spellcasting roll. And again, uh, this is going to cost uh, power points once more. 
Uh, could I get a curious ticket, please? A curious ticket to re-roll, leaving you with six curious tickets remaining, folks. Ooh. I'm going to use my free re-roll. Okay. Free roll. Although, we only need like four successes. Yeah, all you need is one. What's the worst okay. that could happen? That was a five, <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep it. A five is a success. So Celestina, as this wave approaches and the thing beneath it gets closer, you feel waves of dread radiating out from the starlit sea, but still you fight against it, forcing the water back and away as your companions still struggle for purchase. But you see the boat begin to rise up on the swell of that giant wave. Next up, uh, Buster, if you're not ready, are you ready? I I am I am ready. Go for it, Buster. Uh, I'm going to. Um, I guess I don't know. I guess I'm not ready, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to. I'm going to still try <laughs> to um, get uh, basically pull people, pull everyone that's attached to the rope and stuff, like in as close to the to the center of the ship as possible, and just yell. Like, hold on, we're just try to bolster everybody and, and hold them in close if I can. Okay, uh, that sounds like a strength roll to me. Yeah, uh, so... That, that is uh, the one attribute you can, one of the ones you can use at will in most situations. Oh, okay, cool. Um, um, then great, I'll do that. Okay. Strength Give me roll. strength, Buster, as you just try and Spider-Man 2, everybody together, <laughs> holding the rope, making a weird face. <laughs> Can I get a curious ticket, please? A curious <laughs> ticket to re-roll. I aced it. Nice. Yes. Hell yes. Yeah, that's a four. <laughs> a four is a success. Yeah. So... You you see, um, uh. a, a, as you're talking to Victor, you kind of slip the rope over him, and you see Midas a little bit further on, and you you toss him the rope as he sort of ties it around himself. The the boat begins to rise up on the swell of this wave, and suddenly everything is listing to one side, Buster. But you grab onto the mast and you grab the rope with your other hand, and you pull mightily to try and keep your friend's footing solid, and for the time being, you are able to do so. Midas, you are up next, Midas. <laughs> Midas. You're talking to me, yes, okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's gotten real spotty, real I understand. Spotty. We're in the middle of a storm, I think that's like really <laughs> taking out the, uh, the internet a little bit. Yeah. Um, Okay, uh, so Midas, uh, Midas wants to uh, just, so th th there's not like a, there's not anywhere that like we actually would be able to control like the direction of the ship or anything from here, is there? Not I was thinking you can... I could try and use, I, I was thinking, I think I could try and use, like, driving to, like, try and redirect the ship slightly. Um, that's just, that's not going to be possible from up here on the deck. You'd have to be down somewhere in the bowels of the ship, wherever the, the steering part of it is. You probably don't have time to do that right now. Okay, and... And that would still be boating, unfortunately. In that case, <laughs> I just want to fire uh, at this huge thing. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> at this huge thing coming at us, even though it's really big, I, I figure maybe with, like, a good... Good Buchanan ball blast. I can like I don't know, bounce us away from it slightly, like create hey, enough backlash. Throw a Buchanan ball like, in its mouth. Take us away. Any port so, in a storm, I suppose. I want to do a I, I, I want to do a heavy weapon attized Buchanan ball blast. Uh, to okay. Launch at the thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so that's going to be weird science. Spend your extra power point to make it a heavy weapon. So he launches it and he just like dials in a little, or he, he adjusts a couple of settings on the Buchanan, uh, the Buchanan to just like launch it extra powerfully. 
There goes nothing. And it's uh, can I get a curious ticket? I got a five, a, but I want to reroll. Curious ticket to reroll. Here goes maybe nothing. <clears throat> Two more fives. Okay, so it's all five. Oh, so, wow. That's a lot of fives. It's fives all the way down, but fives <laughs> is a success. You um, fiddle the with, down. The, with your wrist-mounted Buchanan, and with the the little soldier fires off a shot, which poof, explodes out of your arm-mounted cannon with a uh, muzzle flash of light and streaks off into the wave. You do not see what happens to it after it breaks the surface of the water, but you hear an answering sound comes shaking out of this thing, vibrating you again to your core, but succeeding. Victor. I no. mean, if you can shoot the thing, I'd like to shoot the thing, you know? All right. <laughs> um, I would like to use ammo whammy, though. Um, and uh, At I, least I assume arcane empowered shots make oh, a yeah. little more sense. <laughs> a yeah, little I, more sense. I have a shot. Uh, I don't know how this works because uh, it's called Ghost Bullet. And basically, the shot is half in this world and half on the hunting grounds, which I assume at this one will be half here and half in the real world. <laughs> so maybe it'll hurt more because it's from outside of this world. I'm pretty sure that would make it less effective. What's the what's the uh, <laughs> mechanical effect of that? Uh, AP six. Yeah, that'll still work. That'll still okay. work. Great. Uh, so do you want me to make a, a spell casting and shooting roll? Um, no, this is a dramatic task. So this is more hinged upon your spell casting role. Okay, that's um, totally it, cool. It's hard to miss this thing, essentially. So uh, give us spell casting. Okay, just need one more success, everyone. It that's all, all you need. Down to me. I really wish it wasn't, but here we go. I aced it on a six, baby. Do it again. Oh, I just got a one. Oh. Uh, so that's a seven, which is a success. Fine. But just need... uh, I know, I just wanted one more. Uh, but yes, I got a seven. A seven, which is a success. So holding on to the uh, to the mast, you feel the rope tighten around your waist as Buster ties it in place and hearing his words, you push off from the mast and stand unsteadily to your feet, pulling your gun out and spinning it, lighting up one of the runes and just sighting this gigantic black shape under the waves. And as you fire your ghostly bullet out of your gun and into the wave, again, you hear the thing just cry out this long, low, mournful sound that shakes everything around you and begins to shake you off of your feet as the wave climbs up and the boat begins to rise up the wave as well. You needed 21 successes in four rounds and you got 21 successes at the Ooh. last minute Oof. in four rounds. Oof. Oof. Sorry the about shape messing up one of those rounds. Moves under the boat as the boat rises up above the wave. And then suddenly at the top of it, there's just a moment of almost silence as the boat just hangs at the top of this wave. And with another low, loud sound, there is a mighty crash from beneath and the boat flies up into the air as you feel a huge impact strike it from below. You are all driven to the deck of the boat and flattened against it as the boat goes tumbling up and out into the night. And as you fly over the, the sea below, you see Lottie begin to glow with a bright golden brilliance. And then you see nothing at all. We're all dead. You awaken on the shore of some beach near the water. The sky above you is again the dark, featureless, slate gray. And the water lapping at your feet is inky black and shining with the brilliance of stars in the night sky. And as you look 
around, seeing your companions all bedraggled and wet and soaking and coughing, lying on this beach near you. You all become aware of figures standing above you. And you look up at what looks like a man made out of some sort of fragile white material, just the outline of a man, the mask of a man, the covering of one, but behind the eye holes, you see nothing but the sky above. And they point sharp looking white spears down at you. We are the emptiness and you are trespassers. And that is where we will end things tonight, folks. We are going to end a little bit earlier tonight just because we are having some technical difficulties that are making it increasingly difficult to be able to have all of us be on the same page as we move forward, but that's fine. This is a perfect place Sorry. to stop. No worries at <laughs> all. Um, before we do much more, we do have a couple of toasts to get to, so everyone, raise your drink of choice. And this, I imagine, came from around boat manifestation time. <laughs> Lady Amago would like us to toast near, far, wherever you are. <laughs> Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Thank Lady you. Amago. Can't believe we I don't get it. And I was three when that movie came out. Jimmy Buffett would like us to toast. <gasps> so glad I woke back up in time for a new Dom song. He has such a lovely, soothing, heartwarming singing voice. Definitely Buffett approved. <laughs> Run him up Thanks, and Jimmy. knock him down. That's Thank you very huge. much, Jimmy Buffett. Mm. Mm. That's huge. Also, oh, Jimmy Buffett. I know like every Jimmy Buffett song, so. Um, it looks like there were two curious tickets that I did not get to tonight, <gasps> so I will keep those. Uh, you know what? I am just going to make a note right now. I will hand those out at the beginning of next week's because I missed them for tonight. You do that. So you do that. Let me just make a note. But thank you very much to Neon Heim and Owen Lean. We'll thank you again next week when we actually hand these out. Thank you very much for that, folks. Thank you to all of you mysterious strangers out there who joined us tonight and who those of you who tipped and toasted, we very much appreciate it. To those of you who just joined us in the chat and hung out with everyone, we very much appreciate having you here as well. Please guys, it does us a world of good. It's a huge help to us to get the word out about the show. The more people who know about it, the more people can join us, the bigger and better our community can grow. So please, if you enjoy what we're doing here at Saving Throw or here on Wild Cards, spread the word. You can use the hashtag WildCardsRPG. You can tag the WildCards account at WildCardsRPG on the social media network of your choice. Or if you want to keep up with everything going on in the world of Saving Throw, be sure to follow at Saving Throw Show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram uh, in order to see what new fun things we have coming down the pipeline for you. Because, spoiler alert, we have some new fun things coming down the pipeline for you. Um... Speaking of, Dom, what is the next thing people can tune in to watch here on Saving Throw? Um, wild cards. Wild cards. <laughs> so be sure to join us next Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific time here on twitch.tv slash saving throw show for more wild cards. Um, also, if you're into Savage Worlds and you're into Megan Caves, you can follow her over to the <laughs> Dat Network. Dragons and Things, our good friends over there. On Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific time, she will be running a new episode of Department of Mysteries, her Harry Potter slash Rippers slash other fun stuff uh, game that she's running it's there. a squash together world of Rippers Resurrected plot point and Harry Potter in 1895. So It's good fun and a great crew, so be sure to check the them out if you want some more Savage Worlds action. Anyone else have anything that they want to throw out? Uh, anything coming up that people can catch you on? Um, you could catch me on uh, vote. Please go vote. Just please go vote. I was yeah. getting that was that was going to be the God. next thing, but catch yes, us all on vote. Catch me it on is the vote. Right. You can catch us all at the ballot box. Uh, we here at Wild Cards are a very big fan of engaging in democracy. So, folks, 
because this election here in America, if you're not American, we apologize. This is just for our American audience members. This is a chaotic election for many reasons, many of them pandemic related. So make sure, make sure, 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 time is getting down to the wire. You are registered. You have your ballot. You know how to cast it. You have a plan or you have a plan for election day, try and vote early if you can. I anticipate that election day uh, polling places are going to be pretty crazy. crazy as they often are. So try and get your vote in early and make sure you follow all of the instructions for sending in your ballot or dropping it off in a ballot box. I think I'm gonna change Celestina's hindrance to just being a person in America currently. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're, that's that one's yeah. a whew, that's a major hindrance. That's a big um, one. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's you don't want to crit oh. fail when you've got that one. Oh no, no, everything everything explodes at that. Point. So uh, do vote, folks. We will not tell you who to vote for, uh, but I I, I will say uh, as as always, I'm a big fan of compassion. So vote in the best interest of someone you know and someone you love who is not doing as well as you. Vote for whoever you think is going to help them do better. Uh, whatever that means to you, just engage with our our democratic process. It's very important. It's always mm -hmm. important. It's very important this time. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you all. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mysterious Strangers, for tuning in week after week. We very much appreciate having you here. And thank you to all of you for playing in the game tonight. Uh, a, thank a big you. Thanks, a big thanks to JP2 for, for playing and doing a pretty good job of convincing me he understands most of the stuff that I'm saying. Uh, thank you for that. I don't know if you heard that. I don't know if he did either. Nope. <laughs> All right, folks. We love you. Stay safe. Take care of each other. And until next time, we will leave you with finger guns. Oh, so much water in my guns. My guns are guns. Water. There's water in my guns.